BBC Radio Cumbria. Sport. It's a fine old stadium, as I was saying. If you walk around the corridors that uh, permeate through Wembley, there are flags and banners hanging off the ceiling of the main corridor, which I suspect are all the clubs that have been at finals or won in finals here before. And one of the names, one of the banners I walked under as I was coming towards the commentary position was that of Workington Town Rugby League Club, of course, here in the Challenge Club many, many years ago. So it's uh, good to see that there's a second Cumbrian name that's going to be added to that one. And also, of course, to Barrow as well. We're here in 1990 in the FA Trophy final and won 3-0 against Leek Town. And hopefully the Cumbrian success will continue here. Although there was one, I think, uh, blot many, many years back and I think believe that Workington did lose a Challenge Cup final here to Wigan. But uh, narrowly, if my memory serves me right. Balloons, there's these huge green balloons being pumped into the air by the Carlisle United supporters. Really is a superb day out. I wonder, Derek, how people are going to feel at the end of the afternoon. One set of supporters is going to be disappointed. Yeah, I, I think one, one thing's certain, what with all the excitement and the adrenaline, I think there's going to be an awful lot of tired people, uh, particularly those that have made the return day trip from Carlisle, leaving at six and not getting back possibly till uh, 11 o'clock tonight. But I'd, I'd just like to ask John, we're, we're, we're coming up now 15 minutes to kick off, John, and the players are about to come out. You're talking about pre-match rituals with footballers now. I know some of them take that quite seriously. Is there? What about you yourself? Was there anything you you had to go through? Well, I think every player has a pre-match ritual. I always used to wait till I was going out the door before I put my, my football top on. I don't know why. It never did me any good. I lay in the hospital bed for nearly three years by doing that. So it didn't do me any good. But I still do it to this day when I played at Gretna. I still put my top on just before I went out the door. But different lads, they put a boot on first and then they put another boot on. And some players wait and they put the shorts on last. It's just something that they've probably had a good game at some time and they've decided that's they're going to stick by that and they just carry on right through their career doing that. Is, is there any little anomalies you can tell us about the Carlisle players at the moment? Is there any one in particular? There's nothing that I actually know. I've noticed some of the lads uh, tend to put their boots on early doors. Uh, they have their shorts and then their boots on and they wonder about their boots and I don't know whether that's a ritual or it's just a thing that they do, but... Um, I know a lot of the lads do that. I don't, uh, but I can't see any of the, the little mm. sneaky ones that they get up to. I, 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 I noticed them. one just before kickoff time. I like the one that uh, Darren Emerson and Dean Walling do, where they go out to each other and they do the high fives and they give a, give each other a good old push. And then I, I, I like to see that. Yeah, anything like that's great at the club. <laughs> I know, great, for, I, great for team atmosphere. <laughs> I mean, the team spirit at Carlisle is absolutely super. They have got yeah. a very, very good team spirit. Bill Bezik is the uh, England basketball coach or former coach. He's a, a commentator for basketball on television, on BBC television. He's been involved with Carlisle United this season. Um, and he, he's strongly the, the psychological, I suppose, coach for Carlisle United. A very, very good friend of, of Mick Wadsworth. Uh, talking to him over the last couple of days, I mean, he highlights one of the crucial things is team spirit. And, and really, that, that does run through the, the Carlisle United side at the moment. Well, I think, I think since I've came to the club in 1984, the team spirit in this squad of players is the best I've ever seen. Everybody is pulling for everybody. There's no big time stars. There's nobody who thinks there's any better than anybody else. Everybody's on the same level. And everybody, as you can see with results, everybody's done a great job this season. And as I speak, Bill Bezik is actually making his way down towards the uh, bench seats with uh, Dr John Howarth, the doctor for the afternoon for Carlisle United. He is the club doctor, or one of them, and uh, he's got the privilege this afternoon of being on the bench. And uh, normally we'll be travelling with Carlisle Border Raiders rugby league team, but uh, this afternoon he's foregone the trip to Gateshead Stadium and he's come to Wembley. I, I wonder why. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, no disrespect to Gateshead Stadium, but I think if I was given the option, I think I know which one I would choose. But uh, yeah, John Howarth, as I say, it, it's great for everybody involved at the club. Uh, there's been so many years where the backroom staff, you know, that, that they've ploughed on a loan furrow, they, you know, that they do the same job week in, week out because they love the club. Uh, and, and I think this is a tremendous reward for them. Uh, the long-standing supporters that can possibly remember the good days in the late 60s and, and the heady days of Division 1 in the 74-75 season. Um, but this is a reward for them. This is a reward for loyalty and particularly the backroom staff. And, and I think it's a great day out for them. I know we were talking about pre-match rituals. Derek Mountville was telling me that uh, he just goes back into the dressing room and notably earlier on he was one of the players earliest back into the dressing room. I think he just concentrates on the game and I know it must be off-putting to those uh, older members of the squad who don't like rap music because they take a massive great ghetto blaster in the dressing room and the music can probably be heard the other side of London when there's nobody in the stadium. And uh, I think he just tries to cut himself off from that and concentrate on his own preparation solely looking ahead to his game and just trying to cut off everything from the outside. Mm. And Mick, what, and, uh, Mick Wadsworth has been... Uh, very, very relaxed as well, as uh, someone was saying earlier on, 
Um, and I think that uh, is largely down to the fact, really, you look at it, Carlisle United have got uh, promotion. There's no worries there at all. Uh, and he can afford to be relaxed going into this game. Yeah, I, I think he can. Uh, but Mick really has got a second set an example to the young lads. He, they're, they're looking they're looking to Mick Wadsworth, the coaching staff, uh, to say to the young lads, you know, like Tony Kay, Darren, Jeff Thorpe, if he gets on the pitch, and, and Richard Prokas, this is a big day out for them. Uh, they look on the coaches as role models. And, and, and these coaching staff now, they've done a tremendous job, I think, at Carlisle. Absolutely tremendous. And what we're seeing this afternoon in the Carlisle United side is a reward for the youth policy uh, and uh, it, it's great and with so many young players knocking on the door um, I think the future for Carlisle looks very very good and of course the money coming in from the revenue won't do any harm at all well I've been told the teams are lining up in the tunnel waiting to come out they're about to come out any second now the band has stopped for just a moment the noise now is just starting to build up to a crescendo and there's activity at the end of the players tunnel and any second now, the two teams are going to take to the field. We are going to get a massive roar as the two are led out. And here they come, led by the referee and linesman. The scenes are absolutely fantastic. The balloons are being thrown in the air. They are red, green, white balloons, blue balloons, flags waving. The noise is absolutely incredible. We can hardly hear ourselves think. The two teams walk out into the penalty area way to our left. Carlisle, the nearest to the, the stand that we're looking down from above the Royal Box. They're wearing red tops. Green shorts and white stockings. Birmingham City all in blue next to them. Mick Wadsworth leads his side out. Barry Fry leads his team out. Mick Wadsworth's son just bouncing a little ball up and down in front of him, just behind the officials. And the noise is absolutely superb. Nick, I don't care what cup final it is, you won't generate much more noise than this, whether it's the FA Cup, European Cup or whatever. The noise from the two supporters, absolutely superb. Well, if this doesn't bring a tear to the eye of the players and the supporters, I don't know what will. John, it is absolutely amazing. Well, I mean, it, you could you could see it's the FA Cup final itself. The atmosphere is absolutely electric. And let's just say here now that uh, there is life left after the Premier League. It's not all about the Premier League as it shows us today. There's a team from the second and a team from the third. And it's just as if it's the two players playing in the FA Cup final. It's magnificent. Now, anybody here would think this was the FA Cup final. It is absolutely electric. The two teams have just lined up in front of the Royal Box. The guest of all of this afternoon is the TV and football commentator Brian Moore. He's about to go out and uh, meet the introduced to the players. Carlisle have lined up to our left and Birmingham City to our right. The Carlisle United supporters really just seem to be overwhelming the atmosphere in the stadium. I think mainly because of just the sheer colours that are on display from the Carlisle United supporters. And uh, the noise just has not died down. I think of the clash of colours as well, Nick. You've got the blue of Birmingham and the green and red and white of Carlisle. And I must say, the Carlisle United supporters, the noise they are making is absolutely tremendous. Crackers, balloons, flags. And for a second, the noise just dips down for just a moment as the teams are introduced to Brian Moore and David Reeves is introducing the players individually. They've just had a chat with uh, Tony Kay, Dean Walling, Stephen Hayward, Derek Mountfield. They all go for that traditional just jogging up and down, bouncing up and down as they're introduced, waiting to be introduced. I think they must be so frustrated, the players, just wanting to get on with it. Well, I think that's a lot about nerves shown as well from everybody else, Nick. You see it from every player that's ever played it with, where they're just moving about, jogging about. And I think they're anxious now to just break away and get warmed up, get their own stretches done and get on with the game. Ricky Otto on the Birmingham City side, just stretching his hamstrings. He's waiting to be introduced to Brian Moore as he makes his way down the line of Carlisle United players alongside David Reeves. The camera crew is down there, the press cameramen at the back as well, taking the photographs. And uh, all the supporters impatient to get this game underway. They are really revelling in it. They've waited a long time for this moment. 
and now it's arrived. I just hope it doesn't pass too many people by. Well, I think that's it? the danger, isn't it? it? It will pass you by. You've just got to soak up. Sorry, John. I think both sets of fans are really enjoying the atmosphere now. They're really getting involved and they're making it know it's going to be a great atmosphere now. I think it's going to be a smashing day. The Carlisle players now just thumbs up to people in the stand and to people on the bench as Brian Moore makes his way down the Birmingham City line. The two teams then this afternoon. We'll start with Birmingham City. We'll start with the way they've been laid out on the programme and the team sheet alphabetically. So Birmingham City, officially the home side, so they've got the home dressing room as well. Carlisle United in the away dressing room, which is the furthest one down the tunnel towards the entrance to Wembley Stadium. Birmingham City line up with Ian Bennett in goal. At number two is Gary Poole. At number three, Gary Cooper. Four is Mark Ward. Five, Dave Barnett. Six, the captain, Liam Daish. Seven, Jonathan Hunt. Eight, Steve Claridge, the goal scorer that Carlisle have to watch out for this afternoon. Nine, Kevin Francis. No mean feat in front of goal himself. At number 10 is Ricky Otto. And 11, Peter Shiro. Shearer. So Birmingham City, really, plenty of firepower, plenty of grit and plenty of skill. On the bench, Louis Donawa, Ryan Price and Paul Tate. For Carlisle United, it's Tony Cage in goal. Darren Edmondson wears the number two shirt this afternoon. He's come through the week, a week of worry for Darren. He picked up an injury, picked up a blood clot, and he must be one of the most relieved players in the Carlisle United side this afternoon to be taking his place on the Wembley turf. Number three is Tony Gallimore. Four is Dean Walling, who got an amazing reception from the Carlisle United supporters, the player of the season, and it showed from the reception he got when he walked out onto the Wembley pitch. Five is Derek Mountfield, a seasoned campaigner. He's won FA Cup winners' medals. He's won the league championship. Carlo will be looking to his experience at the back. Paul Conway came through as well. He wears the number six shirt this afternoon. Carlo will be looking for his imagination in the middle alongside David Curry. Rod Thomas at seven. David Curry at eight. David Reeves, the skipper, at nine. Stephen Haywood is ten. And Richard Prokas is at number 11. The substitutes then are Jeff Thorpe, Jamie Robinson and Tony Elliott. And Brian Moore has just about finished his duties in front of the players, just strolling about with his arms behind his back in a dark black suit and just coming forward now to take his place in the Royal Box for the match itself. The players, I think, are just very, very keen to get on with this. The Birmingham players have been pacing about and just trying to sneak back onto their half of the field for the warm-up. And now everyone stands for the national anthem. one of the most emotional moments of the afternoon so far. Delivered and received, I think, with reverence. And I think, again, full credit to both sets of supporters. Nice to see, nice set, everything's ready. Both clubs gone to their respective ends. Birmingham, obviously, to the tunnel end where their supporters are massed. And Carlisle wearing snazzy red tops with their green shorts showing white stockings. They're kicking up at the, uh, at the other end where there's a whole mass of green and white and ironically it's the Carlisle United uh, supporters that are chanted Blue Army <laughs> and uh, the teams will line up Birmingham will play 4-3-3 Paul, Daesh, Barnett, Cooper across the back Hunt, Ward and Shearer through the middle and their front line is Claridge, Francis and Otto and now the band just marches off towards the Carlisle United supporters away to our right Carlisle will line up with Edmondson, Mountfield, Walling, Gallimore across the back. It'll be Thomas, Prokas, Hayward and Conway through the middle. Thomas pushing forward to overlap with David Reeves and David Curry up front. Carlisle now going through the warm-up on the right-hand side. The red tops are being discarded, being thrown to the coaching staff. Peter Hampton, Joe Joyce out there collecting the red tops. Michael, uh, uh, Michael Wadsworth's son is just enjoying the warm-up as well. Firing a few balls at Tony Cage in the... Goal mouth to our right with Tony Elliott. And uh, 
Another huge roar goes up as the Carlisle United team members are announced over the public address system here. And the Carlisle United supporters give every single one of them a huge cheer. The linesman and the referee just pacing about in the centre, waiting to get the proceedings underway. The substitutes heading back towards the benches in the Royal Tunnel. Mervyn Day just having a chat with an old friend in the tunnel, now makes his way out onto the field as well to help in the clearing up of the training tops as the band marches away down into the tunnel, away to our right. We're only a minute and a half away from kick-off this afternoon. And then the business of the day, that's what we're all here for. We'll get underway. And it's going to be that opening tense, very tense first ten minutes. Yeah, I think it's the team that will settle first that may just uh, sneak it this afternoon. As you say, both teams are packed with experience and both teams have played up here before. Um, so, really, it's just on the day and who settles best that will probably go and win the game. This is the 1994-95 Auto Windscreen Shield final. Birmingham City against Carlisle United. As it stands at the moment, it's the leaders of the second division against the leaders of the third division. The champions elect in both divisions. And uh, one couldn't have asked for a better feast of football that could be provided could be on display this afternoon. With the atmosphere in this ground, Derek, one can't see this is going to be a damp squib. Uh, I'm, I'm nearly lost for words when I look around because you look, you, you think of cup finals as being belonging to, to, to big-name teams, but uh, I, I know you, you're repeating yourself, but I think it's a credit to both clubs. You look at an absolutely packed stadium. Uh, and, Nick, those blank spaces that we mentioned a little while ago, they, they, they've all gone. Uh, there's, a, there's a little block of red uh, to the left where the Birmingham City supporters are, but I can't see a blank seat to the right where the Carlisle fans are, and that's a whole sweep behind the goal, right the way round to my right, and right the way in front of us up until the halfway uh, to the roll box. So the scene set, it looks as though Birmingham are on the left-hand side, they're attacking the Carlisle United end, Carlisle attacking the tunnel, and it looks as though Carlisle United are going to kick off. David Curry just juggling the ball about in the centre now. Still a few loose balls on the pitch, waiting to be cleared away. The referee is checked across with the linesmen and officials on the perimeters of the ground. And uh, we should be about to set to get underway. Birmingham City all in blue. Carlisle United in their deck chair away strip. Red, white and green. Green shorts and white stockings. You're listening to the final live on BBC Radio Cumbria. We're about to kick off. Richard Procast, David Curry in the centre with... Paul Conway just to the right, and Corrick Curry gets things underway, and immediately Birmingham City get possession. A little ball tapped out to the left by Kevin Francis, but he's fouled, and they get the free kick, which is taken quickly by Otto. Goes out to the left wing, the cross comes into the penalty area. Claridge trying to get onto it, but it's flicked away by Carlisle over to the far side, a yard or so up from the corner flag, and a throw to Birmingham City. Will it be a longer one? It's taken short to Otto, down by the corner flag. He's trying to step inside Curry. Gets the ball in the box, Walling comes across, right-footed, forward towards David Reeves, flicks it forward up over halfway. Picked up there, though, by Liam Daish, and turns right-footed, gets the ball forward down the right-hand side. Tried to be attempted to be flicked away by Gallimore, but Francis got in the way. Birmingham City retain possession. Hunt back to the number two, Gary Paul. He just floats the cross in, headed forward by Peter Shearer to the back of the Carlisle United penalty area where Mountfield gets hold of it. Clears it into midfield, Birmingham get possession back again. Out to the right-hand side to Jonathan Hunt, but again Carlisle snaffle out that chance and the ball played forward by Mountfield to David Reeves on the left wing. Just pushes it back to Gallimore. Gallimore, a ball through the centre. Will Conway chase onto this? No, the defender's across. Daisha's got a foot in there, takes the ball away. Birmingham get it back up to the halfway line. And again, a tackle comes in from Gallimore, trying to take it forward. The appeals for the foul from Carlisle United but it's given by Peter Folks, the referee this afternoon of clacton on sea to Birmingham City. Hectic well, start. Well, what a ferocious start by both sides. Kevin Francis showed he's, he's going to be very dangerous in there, there, but a tremendous ball from Tony Gallimore nearly put Paul, Paul Conway on. Gary Paul takes the free kick from the halfway line. It drops to the back of the Carlisle penalty area, and a free kick's been awarded. This is in a very, very dangerous position. Only a yard or so out from the back of the Carlisle United penalty area. In fact, the referee's just uh, asked the ball to come a little bit further back. Five yards outside of the penalty area on the right-hand side. Three over the ball at the moment. But Ricky Otto is just jogging away into the D at the back of the box. Over the ball then, Jonathan Hunt and Gary Paul. Hunt takes it, cracks into the wall, comes off Richard Prokast. Back out on this right side to Paul. He plays the ball along the floor. A little one-two with Hunt. The cross put in by Paul. Flicked away as Dean Walling puts pressure on Claridge at the back of the box. Or was it Daesh? But the ball out, it's cleared up into the Birmingham City half. 
pumped down forward again by Dave Barnett and straight into the hands of Tony Kagan. He'll be relishing that first touch. I think that's an important touch for Tony Kagan. He's got it in a controlled manner. He hasn't had to make a save. He's got it. Now he can get a feel of the ball. But uh, this uh, Kevin Francis is causing all sorts of problems and it was a foul on him that caused the free kick. Edmondson picks up the ball on halfway, down the right side, puts a longer ball down towards the right-hand corner flag. A chase back for Dace. Reeves is trying to just get in behind the goalkeeper, but the goalkeeper's marshalled that well. Ian Bennett's taken the ball out behind, and it's going to be a goal kick for Birmingham City, and that's at their end of the ground. And uh, everyone seems to be intent on the game now. After all the balloons and the flags, there's not a flag in sight now. Everybody sat down watching this game, just gripped by the frenetic start. We played three minutes. It's Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. A long ball forward from Ian Bennett. Breaks down the right side of midfield, but Gallimore turns well. Gets plenty of height and distance on the ball. Up over halfway, flicked back by Curry. The foul again goes to Birmingham City. Stephen Hayward not pleased with that. And the ball retrieved by the ball-headed figure of Dave Barnett. Not a hair on his head. <laughs> and the free kick comes down the right side. It's pushed forward by Hunt trying to get Claridge away in the middle, but comes back out to Poole, then defended by Manfield, and surely Curry pulled over by Hunt, and eventually the ironic cheers from the Carlisle United supporters because Carlisle have won a free kick. Well, a frantic start, as you say, Mick, by both clubs. Carlisle began to settle down, every player seems to have a touch of the ball, and let's hope now we can get the, the ball up into the opposing team's half. Gallimore with a free kick, down the left side. Barnett gets the header in, bat out to Conway, Conway gets the ball to Hayward, he's got a chance in the penalty area, can he score, he pulls it across, Thomas has missed the sitter, Thomas just had to run onto the ball and put it in the back of the net, and he's missed an open goal, I can't believe that chance well, has gone. I've, I've got, uh, I mean OK, that was the negative side, but what about the run by Paul Conway, that's twice he's done it in the opening five minutes and that's what we've been missing, but Paul Conway pulled it across and Thomas missed the open goal completely, oh dear me. Well, well, I really can't believe what we've just seen. You'd have given Thomas to put that one away every single time. Well, it was a great chance there. Possibly a little bit behind Rod Thomas there, but it was a tremendous run by Paul Conway, and it shows you how dangerous he can be on this pitch. Just seemed to have the time, though, to perhaps uh, just thought about it, but the chance goes. They can't let it dwell on their minds. They've got to push forward, and as you said, Derek, you've got to trust Paul Conway's run. Just look for more of those little probing through the Birmingham City defence, Conway could be the key to unmatch uh, it. Yeah, uh, uh, John's just made a good point there, in actual fact, I, I don't know whether Rod Thomas was thinking Conway was going to shoot, I, I think in that position he, he could have tried the cross shot. Carlisle on the attack again, Curry down the right side, Thomas on the wing, Curry tries to get past Peter Shearer, but in the end the ball rolls out into touch, it's going to be a Birmingham City throw. Curry trying to block the route back to Ian Bennett in goal, and that seems to be an avenue that Birmingham won't take. They take it down the line, flicked on by Kevin Francis. He's huge, but the ball comes into the middle to Conway. He gets his foot round it, gets it down the right side of the penalty area. Headed forward again by Daesh. There's pressure on Darren Edmondson on the far side from Ricky Otto. The ball stays in play, though, and breaks down towards the right-hand corner flag at the Birmingham end, and Birmingham forced to put the ball into touch on that far side. Signs now, Carlisle trying to take the initiative. I, I think Carlisle are settling. A little dodgy opening couple of minutes, but I think the way they're playing at the moment, with David Curry creating as well, um, I think we've got every chance that we might just open up. Here's Rod Thomas approaching the, penal approaching the penalty area. He he's doing a solo run, he's forced backwards, he does, a, he does his little jink. Now he's looking for uh, Tony Gallimore. Gallimore clips it into the penalty spot, looking for David Reeves, but he's hooked away by the Birmingham defence. I think David Reeves possibly looking at the referee because he felt he'd been pushed, and now... It's a free kick to Carlisle because Rees was obstructed at the back of the box. The referee instantly nodded his head and he's pointed for the free kick for Carlisle, right on the edge of the box. The Birmingham City defenders line up their wall. Rod Thomas just on the left-hand side of it. Curry's over the ball at the back of the D. Port Conway there as well and Stephen Hayward. And this is a move they've been practising and training at St Albans on Saturday morning. The set-piece routine and just this position as well. Will Hayward try and curl it into the top right-hand corner? He's over the ball, so is David Curry. Who's going to take it? Curry clips it in, it comes off the wall. Back out to Prokas, takes a shot. Just wide of the left hand up right. Well, that was a great effort from Richard Prokas there. But just before that, the big captain, Deish, I thought had filled uh, Dave Reeves inside the box and I thought the referee could have given a penalty. I, I agree with you, John. I thought it was just inside. And my, my first reaction was, we've got a penalty, but he gave it just outside. Seven minutes, Birmingham City nil. Carlisle United nil. Chances for Carlisle. 
Paul Conway's cross in the fourth minute, which Thomas just couldn't get hold of and missed. And then that free kick, which Prokast just pumped a little bit too wide of the left hand upright. Now Birmingham City surge forward. Barnett tries to get the ball down the right hand edge of the penalty area, but Mountfield clears it. Up to Thomas, chips the ball into the centre, into space, brings it down beautifully into the centre circle. Conway behind him. Reeves forward, he plays the ball down into space behind the figure of Gary Cooper, but Cooper as his role in all the Westerns, has got across and saved the day. And it's going to be a throw for Carlisle United on the far side. The ball comes back into the middle to Richard Prokas. He looks up, it's gone behind him. He pushes it back up towards halfway to Tony Gallimore. Down the left-hand side now, but that ball a little bit too long. Headed away by Gary Paul. Back to Conway, though. Thomas, though, he's trying to take the ball forward, but Hunt just got a foot in there. And Birmingham get the ball forward again. Long ball played forward for Francis. He's out on his own. He's going to chip the ball in towards the open goal. He's gone flat at the back of the area and Dean Walling across the left hand upright takes the ball down as the ball just slid away. It looked as though it was going to roll wide anyway, but Francis was through. Cake had to come. Francis saw the opportunity to lob the keeper and the ball just bounced away into safety. To be fair, Tony Cake didn't take any prisoners there. It was a real clash between him and Francis and he lobbed the ball over. I don't actually think the ball was going in the net, but Dean Wallace certainly made sure and cleared it. But uh, Tony Cage had every entitlement to come for that, and I think Francis came off second best. I think just before that, we've seen Rod Thomas could be so important to the team today. He's already in the groove. He took two or three players on, put a smashing ball into David Reeves. And if he can get lots of ball to him, I think we, we could get uh, a couple of goals from him this afternoon. Yeah, Rod, Rod's just been um, attended to by, I think, is, is it yeah, by, by Peter Hampton. I think he's uh, he's just got a knock. He's having the uh, the magic spray on his ankle, and uh, let's hope he was right. A lovely piece of skill, John, wasn't it? He flicked it over two people, and he was away with about ten yards of space. Yeah, great. Had his back to the opposition, but he knew exactly where he was. He was aware enough to flick it over the player's head, and then a day of space to run it and sma put a smashing ball into Dave Reeves. Nothing came of it, but there's plenty of optimism there from uh, Rod Thomas. Well, both Rod Thomas and Kevin Francis are back on their feet now. Kevin Francis a little bit tentative, Rod likewise, but I think they're both OK. Just early knocks in a frenetic start. Ten minutes coming up on the clock. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. And it's, uh, well, even Stevens in many, many ways. Carlisle perhaps the better chances, but Birmingham City always looking a threat. And now the ball played out on this right-hand side, down towards the back of the Carlisle United penalty area. Comes into midfield, Hunt trying to take it through. Little nodded header across the back of Stephen Hayward. It comes down for Hunt again. He plays the ball out to Otto on the left-hand side of the Carlisle penalty area. Two defenders in front of him. He gets the cross in towards Claridge. Headed away by Mountfield. Comes back out to Peter Shearer. Try to line up the shot. It ricochets and comes across the right-hand edge of the penalty area to Francis, who gets roundly booed by the Carlisle United supporters. He still has possession. Flicks the ball to the back of the area to Hunt. He's trying to take it down now towards the corner flag, turns on the right of the penalty area, tries to get the cross in, headed out by Gallimore to Paul Conway, a little touch to Rod Thomas, but he's dispossessed by Hunt, and the ball into touch, and it's going to be a throw to Carlisle United on the left-hand side, halfway inside their own half, taken into Haywood, back out to Tony Gallimore, left-footed, gets the ball long and deep forward, David Reeves just putting a little bit of pressure on Daish at the back, but the header from Daish is good, into the centre circle, then Curry steals the ball, in the centre circle for Carlisle, in the Birmingham half, just taps it back to Tony Gallimore on the halfway line, left-hand side, left-footed, gets the ball towards Conway, he gets a header, he got a push, the referee says no, Hayward tries to get a header forward again in midfield, but Otto's picked it up now for Birmingham City, and he stabs it out to the left-hand side to Gary Cooper, the longer ball down the left channel of midfield, it's flicked up in the air by Dean Walling, he has a second attempt, gets it forward, down the Carlisle right, the Pauls come forward and he pushes the ball out into touch on the far side. It should be a Carlisle United throw. In fact, it was Cooper who pushed that ball out. He's come forward. He's ranged forward over halfway. And it'll be a Carlisle United throw. I think if Rod Thomas can really get himself a little bit of space, he doesn't seem to be overawed by the situation. No, he's took it straight in his stride. Right from the first whistle, he's took it straight in his stride. And he's took a couple of players on early doors. Showed a lot of confidence, so I think he could be the key to open up the Birmingham defence. And now Carlisle have to defend again. Ball played over the top, back, which Dean Walling has to push into touch on the far side, under pressure from Claridge, he does so, it's going to be a Birmingham City throw, a few yards up from the corner flag on the left-hand side, Gary Cooper comes forward to take this one, in it goes, towards Mark Ward, we've seen little of Ward so far, but a little tap to the right-hand side to Hunt, he takes it round and across the left-hand side to Ricky Otto, almost on the touchline, the cross comes in towards Francis, his height is used to good effect, with the header straight to Tony Cage, the power just wasn't behind the ball. And a round of applause for Tony Cave. Thomas then picks up the ball. He's going to run out of defence with it. Up towards halfway. Turns inside. Turns into the middle. Taps it across to his right to Hayward in the centre circle. Inside the Carlisle half. 
plays it across the right-hand side to Darren Edmondson. The ball through the middle towards David Rees. The defender daces round the back of him, though, but it's placed forward again by Conway. Down the right side of the penalty area to Rod Thomas. He's trying to turn inside Barnett. Gets the ball back, or tried to, to Darren Edmondson. The tackle comes in from Otto, and it'll be a throw to Carlisle United on the far side, in line with the Birmingham City penalty area. In fact, it's perhaps just a little bit further up than that. Edmondson takes it. Almost casually to Rod Thomas, he looks up, right-footed, puts the cross across the back of the penalty area. Conway flicks the ball on, nobody in the box for Carlisle, David Reeves too far forward, the ball back out. Conway gets another header in, Ward just flicks it to his right-hand side, to Gary Poole. Poole now looks up, plays the ball through the centre, down the right channel to Kevin Francis, in the middle now, on the halfway line, to Peter Shearer, plays it across the left-hand side. Birmingham City now pushing forward, it's Gary Cooper. Down the left channel of midfield, the ball cut out though by Hayward as Cooper tried to play the pass through. And the Birmingham player looked up to the referee, but the referee says play on, no foul there. The ball back to Daish on the halfway line, down the left channel of midfield, to, towards Claridge. Back it goes though to Ward, pumps the ball out to the far left-hand side, bounces away from Otto, into touch. It'll be a Carlisle United throw, and Darren Edmondson will take this one for Carlisle, of Kevin Francis. If you wanted an obstacle, you've got one with a route back to the goalkeeper. I, I, I think you have, haven't you? You've got, you? you've got the classic route one there, haven't you? Goalkeeper to Francis, and then uh, then the other lad, uh, Otto, picking it up, or Shearer picking it up. But Carlisle are coping quite well at the moment, and uh, my I'm very impressed with Paul Conway. He's made a tremendous difference to this uh, to Carlisle United, and if Paul's on his game, and particularly Rod Thomas creating, uh, I think we're, we're in for a cracker. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. 14 minutes of the Auto Windscreen Shield final at Wembley Stadium. You're listening to it live on BBC Radio Cumbria. And Ricky Otto has a chance for a shot from the outside of the box, which Cave got down well to his left to save. Into his midriff. A difficult shot because it was just snaking round awkwardly, but Cave was equal to that one and makes the save. If it's level scores at 90 minutes, it goes to sudden death extra time. Whoever scores first then are the winners of the trophy. If it's still level after that, it'll be penalties. Mystic Meg predicted a 2-1 win to Carlisle United. Well, three goals still to come then. It's 0-0. Steve Hayward halfway inside the Birmingham City half. Plays the ball across the right-hand side to Darren Edmondson. Through the right-hand channel to Conway. Nice ball back out to Rod Thomas as Carlisle try and get numbers forward. He steps round Ricky Otto. How much is Otto worth? Oh, and then Gary Cooper just gets the ball away from Thomas. Through into the centre, though. Wasted back to Steve Hayward. Plays it along to the left-hand side to Tony Gallimore. Left-footed along the floor to Conway. Conway, though, robbed by Barnett for just a second. Then Thomas into the area. The ball just taken away from him. And Bennett gets it clear. Carlisle are playing the football on the floor. Carlisle are playing nice football. Surely they must get something from it in the end. Well, yeah, sorry, I was going to say, uh, once again, Paul Conway, he was uh, creative there, wasn't he? Uh, and again, Paul Conway pops up in the right places and uh, we, we were nearly in, John. Yeah, Paul, Paul Conway did tremendously well. A good half chance for Rod Thomas, but big Liam Dessert, Plymouth set defender, did a tremendous tackle on the goal for the clear. 15 minutes, the Carlisle United supporters trying to get behind their side again. The throw down the left-hand side from Gallimore to Hayward, back to Gallimore, down the left. Headed out, though, by Birmingham City, by Barnett. It'll be, in fact, a little touch off David Reeves. It's going to be the Birmingham throw on this right-hand side. Poole will take it. Down the line it goes towards Francis and Reeves, to Gallimore and... Francis really can have no, no real reason for feeling hard done by because uh, we didn't even have to jump his arms around Tony Gallimore's neck. Yeah, that was quite surprising there that he had to put his arms around because he stands head and shoulders above Tony Gallimore. So the rule there was there was no need for it. But uh, let's have a good delivery in here from Steve Hayward. 16 minutes. Hayward with a free kick. Steps up once. Step back again. Everyone trying to lose their markers in the box. The ball drifts in. It's a good kick. And Dean Walling oh! flicks it forward, but just wide of the right hand upright. And Dean Walling looks askance for a second. What a wonderful chance. Well, what a great cross from Steve Hayward to start away with. And I don't know, actually know where Dean Walling got a touch to that or not. He may have just have got a little nick on it. But I think if he could have got a full hide on it, that would have been 1-0 to Carlisle United. A lovely, lovely chance. And that's the move that Carlisle practice. Dean Walling, the player that comes forward. And uh, just in fact, John, as you said, as we look at our replay monitor in the commentary box, just over the top of Dean Walling. So just failed to get the chance to flick that one home for Carlisle United. So it remains Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil in the 17th minute of the first half. We've got a wonderful afternoon here. It's not bright sunshine, but it's very bright in the sense that uh, it's clear and it's cool and it's just right for football. 
The Carlisle supporters again trying to get behind their side. Remember, they've got half the number of people in this ground that Birmingham City have got. And really, they're making some amazing noise, trying to get behind their team. The ball headed forward by Derek Mountfield. Again, Barnett gets above David Rees. Up to halfway for Birmingham City. The ball played across the left-hand side to Otto. He finds Cooper in space, but Edmondson's across. Gets the tackle in. A good one. The ball goes hurling itself into the Birmingham supporters. Away behind the dog track on the far side. So at the moment, after this opening quarter of an hour, really, I think we can see that... Uh, Carlisle perhaps uh, have just taken the edge I, I think so, uh, I think uh, that was a tremendous uh, tackle by Darren because I think he may have been a foot behind the player uh, in, in pace and he certainly made it up in a good clearance but this looks dangerous, Birmingham uh, trying to come for the cross but Tony Kay picks it up uh, and once again the danger from Birmingham is, is snuffed out but certainly Carlisle uh, can look at their opening 20 minutes work and they can say well we've matched you and credit there to Paul Conway as well who got back if there's any doubt about his ankle injury I think as someone said the other day the adrenaline rush will really take him through this game now Birmingham City trying to get the ball forward again down towards Steve Parridge halfway inside the Carlisle half but on the line almost he just takes it around the back of Walling gets the ball into the centre where eventually it finds Hunt he flicks the ball out to the right hand side as a chase back for David Rees he comes back to defend as he does so often and has done all season and takes the ball out into touch on the right hand side a yard up from the corner flag that's where Tony Elliott and Jamie Robinson just warming up now for Carlisle, but uh, just loosening up. No signs that either of them are going to come on. No need for that just yet. The throw taken to Mark Ward. David Reeves stabs a foot in there, but Ward retains possession, gets it to Paul on the right touch line. Back out to Ward, plays it along the floor to Claridge at the back of the penalty area, trying to turn. Nice one-two at the back of the box. Gallimore gets in there. Eventually the ball's cleared up to Thomas, but he flicks the ball on, but there's no support because Carlisle back in defence. Curry... Heads up to halfway though, where Daesh plays the ball down the left-hand side. Otto flicks it forward to Steve Claridge on the left-hand edge of the penalty area. Trying to step inside Dean Walling, does so, but Walling gets a foot in. Comes to Hunt, a chance if he can take it past the defender, but he can't. Edmondson just blocked it, and then a shot from Ward at the back of the box. And that goes wide at the left-hand upright, but uh, Carlisle defending well there. Tremendous defender from Kalel. I love a little passing movement from Birmingham in the box. Two or three one-twos, but Kalel back four, stood still, didn't budge. Didn't give Birmingham City an inch, and it ended up with a smash shot over the bar. Yeah, I think that's the that, that, that was the point of good defending there, that they were forced to shoot from some 20-odd yards. They were working their way in the box, but good defending, and they were forced the ball out. Maybe I'll hear the odd cracker going off. I don't think there's anybody shooting anybody on the bench for anything they shouldn't have said, but the ball played forward by David Curry, a chase for Rod Thomas, but Bennett comes to the edge of his area and clasps it firmly to his chest and calms everybody down, and Thomas heads back looks almost wearily towards the halfway line but I'm sure that's an illusion we've only been playing 20 minutes and Rod Thomas has already had a great chance in the fourth minute to far Carlisle into the lead Bennett comes well out of his area to take the kick forward towards Francis gets above Mountfield and there's not many players that do that but then when you're six foot seven you've got uh, a considerable advantage Otto in the middle plays the ball back to Mark Ward plays it out to the right side to Gary Paul in it goes to Hunt again Hunt really is the player for Birmingham just trying to get the moves going in midfield he gets fouled pushed over by Hayward and Birmingham City win the free kick right side of midfield halfway inside the Carlisle United half Tony Cave directing operations and is Hunt Jonathan Hunt going to swing this ball across to the tall loping figure of Kevin Francis on the far left hand side of the penalty area being marked by Derek Mountfield Paul steps over the ball Hunt plays the ball in but straight towards Darren Edmondson or David Reeves, in fact, who put the ball over his own bar. He's holding his chest. I think he realised what a close call that was, Reeves, as the ball dropped in. It was a very, very elusive, difficult ball, in fact. Well, it was a good ball, but uh, I I'm just wondering whether Tony Cage should have shouted and claimed it. Uh, there, there wasn't a Birmingham player within two or three yards of David Reeves, but very fortunate, because that could have gone anywhere. Corner to Birmingham on the far side. Swings in, high in the air, over the penalty spot. Just flicked forward by Peter Shearer down the right side of the penalty area. And Reeves makes amends for that earlier little bit of uh, heart-rending play as he gets the ball down the line and eventually put into touch by Birmingham. And it's going to be a Carlisle United throw. Halfway inside their own half. Gallimore will take this on the left. Looking for support. Forward to Curry. Back to Gallimore. Right-footed. Just chips it down the line. But it swings out into touch. And it's going to be a Birmingham City throw on the right-hand side. Just back inside their own half of the field the 
goal chances have been few and far between, really. Well, we've had chances both end now. I mean, I don't know actually how that ball stayed out the net. It looked to me as if Dave Reeves had swiped it into the back of the net. But uh, it stayed out, that's the main thing. Space at a premium this afternoon, nobody wants to give it away. Barnett getting the ball forward, long one for Claridge, comes down the right-hand edge of the Carlisle penalty area, steps inside Gallimore at the back, flicks in the cross towards Francis, towards Otto. And Otto was the player closest, but just over the top of him. And you wonder what would have happened if Francis had been the player in front. The ball just drifts wide. Again, I think that was good defending. They had the, they had the defender covered. There was just that little bit of blocking to stop him making his run. Uh, and full credit to the two Carlisle central defenders. I thought they defended that cross very well. But it was a dangerous cross, wasn't it? Two tremendous crosses from the Birmingham wingers there. And I think the problem is going to be is keeping Francis at bay for the 90 minutes. Tony Cage with the goal kick right down through the middle as Conway gets bungled over by Barnett, but the ball still with Carlos. They push it forward. It's headed away by Daish into midfield, back away by Conway to Curry. Plays a nice ball, trying to dissect the two defenders. Reeves is chasing on to Gary Paul, gets the last touch. And in fact, the defender did, and it's going to be a corner on the left hand side. The linesman straight away pointing at the corner flag. And all credit to David Rees for working for that. Yes, he did. He ran after that. It was. Uh, it looked a good ball, but the ball just skidded off that uh, off the surface. And David, full credit to him, chased after it, got the all important touch, and uh, we got ourselves uh, a corner. And I wonder if Steve Haywood on this right side can turn a nice in swinging corner. Here we go, Steve Haywood with the corner. Right footed in towards the near post, headed away by Birmingham City. Carlisle's first corner of the afternoon. Back out to Gallimore at the back of the area. Loses it though and. Birmingham City swarm out now, Mark Ward in midfield is trying to take it past Hayward who got back and then Francis is so far offside. I don't think he can wonder about the cheers from the Carlisle United supporters, no complaint about that decision. Long, long way off, off uh, offside. Halfway through the first half, it's Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. The auto windscreen shield final, live on BBC Radio Cumbria. And the opening exchanges, perhaps Carlisle with the better chances in front of goal. Cage with the free kick, right footed, down towards the left hand edge of the Birmingham penalty area. Reeves flicks it on, but Ward's back to get the ball forward, eventually up to halfway where Francis just gets the last touch that takes it left to Ricky Otto. Now a surging run by Francis, he gets the ball left hand edge of the penalty area. Mountfield's back, Edmondson's back, and Francis on the left hand side leaves the ball for Cooper. Cooper can't get the ball in, Francis does eventually, spins off, oh, Ricky Otto, what a save from Tony Kay. Tips the ball over the bar. Otto must have thought he'd scored at the left-hand side. Keg, what a reaction save. Well, that was unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. We're just watching it on the monitor, dipping under the bar, up goes Tony's right hand and flicks it over. And Dean Walling, first to congratulate him. Absolutely top draw save. Oh, that was a magnificent save from Tony Keg. Yeah. Corner on the left-hand side for Birmingham. Again, it's high. Flick forward by Shearer. Breaks to the right-hand side of the penalty area as far as Birmingham concerned, but... David Reeves has picked it up, appeals now for the corner from Birmingham, but given to David Reeves, a free kick possibly, there's a stanchion just in the way, no, it's a throw in on this right hand side, and that'll be to Tony Gallimore, but that fingertip save from Tony Keg was absolutely superb, Bre really. But the word that comes to my mind is absolutely breathtaking. Otto was in, and I think he thought he'd scored, he'd had his head in his hands afterwards, and uh, Keg has earned himself some plaudits certainly this afternoon with that save. Really, the first one he's been called on to make this afternoon, apart from, apart from a couple of shots that uh, he got down too well, but watched all the way. Now, Carlisle defending again. Hayward gets to the ball first. A little flick on by Paul Conway in the Carlisle half. He's got to try and get it away from Mark Ward, but Ward's got hold of it down to this right hand side to Hunt. And eventually, it's uh, lost by Birmingham again on the right hand side as far as Carlisle are concerned, and Conway. Tries to get the ball forward, bundled into touch, helped to his feet by Peter Shearer. And it's going to be a Carlisle United throw on the far right-hand side. And the pace still, John, is not, not giving up. Well, it's, it's, it's unrelenting. It's just going for 25 minutes now. They haven't had to stop for a breath. But I think what I'd like to see is maybe the Carlisle back four just getting a little bit tighter on the two wide players. They're getting a little bit too much room just at the moment. And Kevin Francis had a couple of chances, finishing up with Otto nearly scoring there. So if we could get a little bit tighter, I'd be a bit more happy. Free kick, in fact, on the far side, taken by Edmondson, hangs at the back of the Birmingham penalty area, eventually cleared, into midfield though, only as far as Conway, nice little ball played out to the left-hand side to space for Steve Hayward though, it's closed down quickly, he plays it to his right in midfield to Procast, little triangles made with Tony Gallimore and he gets the ball down to Curry at the back of the area, where's the overlap coming from David Reeves, is it there, the shot attempted by David Curry, came off the bottom or the 
lower back of David Reeves and spins away down this right-hand side where Birmingham get the ball forward up towards halfway. Francis in the battle with Mountfield and Francis gets the ball forward to Hunt. Hunt now on the midfield roll. He's got space with Otto on the left-hand side. Edmondson will have to get across quickly. Back of the area for Ricky Otto. Takes the shot. Crashes into Edmondson. Cooper's in there quickly. The ball comes back out, though, to Ricky Otto on the far touchline. He gets the ball in quickly to Hunt. He's got to try and get it past Conway. He slips, still has possession, plays it out to the line to Cooper. Cooper on the far touchline, halfway inside the Carlisle half. Bad ball in, it's snapped out by Paul Conway. A run through, now he gets a nice ball through to the right to Rod Thomas. A nice ball played to David Reeves. Can he take it past the defender, Barnett? But Barnett got a touch and takes the ball into touch. But nice interplay by Carlisle. And they get the distance, they get the ground and they've got a throw in line with the Birmingham City penalty area. How many times have we said it, Nick? Carlisle seem to be under the cosh and then there's a nice little triangle works and all of a sudden Carlisle are breaking and they've got a chance. I wonder how much we're going to have to look to a flair player, though, to get that opening, to get well, that I, goal. I think John and I have both said this. we're very, very pleased that Paul Conway's playing and I think he's still the key if his ankle holds up. 29 minutes, Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. And it's Birmingham on the ball, in the middle, with Mark Ward in the Carlisle half. He plays it out to the right-hand side to Paul. A little tap back in, though, to Jonathan Hunt. He really seems to be the midfield maestro for Birmingham City, the one that's running around making the moves, but then the ball played forward by Paul that's lost to Procast, and he stabbed it to his right to Dean Walling at the back of the area. Forward into midfield to Rob Thomas. A little bit of space, a little bit of time to play with. Oh, an attempted through ball played by Paul Conway. If that had come off, Rees would have been away. Just couldn't get the height and Birmingham City managed the counter-attack. Ricky Otto now lifting the ball over the Carlisle defence, or trying to, for Peter Shearer, but Cage across the right-hand edge of his penalty area and takes that one well. He read it well, Tony. I think he, he, he's really come on over these last couple of months, I think, Tony Cage. Uh, he went through a little bit of a dodgy period around the Christmas time, but uh, I think Tony is really emerging uh, potential for a top draw, and I still can't get over that save. Absolutely phenomenal 76,000 people in this stadium gripped by this match it's been end to end and sure we're going to have a goal this afternoon I know that because this game will be finished by sudden death or penalties but in the open play at the moment we've not got one yet on the half hour Tony Gallimore in the middle plays it to his right to Richard Procast little triangle built up again Conway gets the ball out to the left hand side to Hayward Hayward now plays it to his right to Procast in the midfield and he'll stab it back to Tony Gallimore and I suppose John is the triangle comes up it's pulling Birmingham players in it's pulling them out of space yeah well I think the key is if we can keep feeding Paul Conway he's the man with the vision that can pass it forward to a front lad so let's hope we can keep his match fitness up Birmingham get the ball forward with Daesh the Republic of Ireland international a long ball forward that bounces into touchdown the Carlisle left halfway inside their own half Tony Gallimore will take this throw for the deck chair bedecked team gets it forward to Rees flicks it on over halfway towards David Curry but Barnett was back and now it's flicked to the left, though, by Rod Thomas. Back to Gallimore. Down the line. The flag's up. Free kick to Birmingham City. Just back inside their own half. Flicked in from the touchline. Into Daesh in the middle. And he comes forward now towards the left-hand edge of the centre circle. Up towards the halfway line. Puts on a little sudden spurt of speed, trying to take it past David Reeves. He's got some distance now. Gets the ball out to the touchline in line with the edge of the penalty area for Ricky Otto. He's trying to play, bring the ball into the box. Flicks it in but over the top of everybody, and that should be comfortable for Tony K. Gallimore on the uh, left-hand edge of the penalty area. Brings it forward now, looking up, looking for some support, looking for a move, looking for a gap. Left-footed, lifts it over Francis towards Steve Hayward on the halfway line. He chests it down, but under pressure from Gary Paul and Mark Ward. Loses the ball, but the ball out into touch for a Carlisle United throw on the left-hand side. I'd like to see a little bit more movement up front. There was a case there where Tony Gallimore had the ball. He desperately wanted to deliver it, but there was nobody up around the halfway line to take the pressure off him. And he just had to, he had to thunder it up uh, and really hope for the best. But Carlisle United have got a throw in and uh, Tony, Gallimore, uh, Tony Gallimore takes it, flicks it into the middle. Paul Conway's going for it. The goalkeeper loses it. <laughs> the flag's up, though. And I think all the time the goalkeeper's going to win those decisions. <laughs> yeah, I was just waiting for that. <laughs> yep, a nice uh, lifted ball into the box, but uh, Conway, the pressure on Ian Bennett, and uh, Bennett, the goalkeeper, wins the free kick. It's Wembley Stadium. It's the auto windscreen shield final. It's Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. And we've got 14 minutes or less until half-time. A long, high, deep ball played forward for Daesh to deal with for Birmingham City. Back over halfway, down the Carlisle left, it rolls into touch. Tony Gallimore will take this one. In it goes into space to Steve Hayward. 
looks up, left footed, gets it down the line towards David Curry. Barnett's across, little touch forward to Poole. Right footed up towards the halfway line to Hayward for Carlisle. He plays it to his left to Tony Gallimore, tried to get the ball through the gap down the left channel of midfield. Eventually, though, comes back into the midfield to Conway. A nice ball played out to Darren Edmondson in space on the right hand side. Otto in front of him, plays it to his left to Hayward. He's got Peter Shearer there blocking the pass forward, and Shearer gets the ball forward now towards Steve Claridge. A little one two played to Shearer, and then the ball played down the left for Francis to chase, but Derek Mountfield's back across as well. He has to put pressure on Francis. A little touch goes in. Appeals from the Birmingham supporters for the foul, but it's not given. Birmingham come forward again now. The cross played in by Claridge towards Hunt. And Prokas was back, put him off his shot. The ball goes over the bar, but Prokas back to defend and doing well. Perhaps took a little bit of a knock, hobbled back to the far post. But Carlisle, it's a corner for Birmingham. Good defended by Richard Prokas. He ran 30, 40 yards to pick up. Jonathan Hunt and it was a tremendous clearance I think it was tremendous reading of the game for a young lad he saw what was happening and he got back and covered it the short corner to Claridge at the edge of the box back it goes to the left hand side the cross comes in a touch from Shearer and Dean Walling I think was cool and in command there knew what he was doing heads the ball around the right hand side of the upright out for the corner on the right side but he said calm down as soon as he made the header I think he knew all the time what he was going to do the corner on the right-hand side then for Birmingham City. Jonathan Hunt will take this one. This is going to be the longer one. In he comes, left-footed, swings in, under the bar. It's cleared away by Keg. I think got a touch right across the face of the goal. Claridge, head in his hands, just needed to tap it and it would have been in the back of the net. Well, I, I honestly don't... Well, it obviously it didn't touch anybody because the referee is actually given, uh, given a goal kick, but uh, it was a very, very good corner indeed. It was a little bit too far out for Tony Keg to come, uh, and when he did come, there was the big defenders on the line, and it was a real scramble, and uh, a goal kick ensued. Missed absolutely everybody. It was a foot out. It just needed a touch. Carlisle, I wonder that luck's with them this afternoon. Mystic Meg, 2-1. I hope she's right. She said it was for Carlisle. It's nil-nil at the moment. She said I was going to win the lottery and I didn't, so... <laughs> you don't have to put a down on it, Derek. <laughs> talk it up, talk the game up. It doesn't need talking up, it's superb. A nice through ball from Steve Hayward to David Reeves. left hand to the penalty area, defenders back. Back to Hayward, a poor cross. It's blocked, question mark over handball. The referee says no. Ward brings the ball out into midfield for Birmingham City. The luck wasn't with Carlisle then. They get the ball out along the halfway line to Ricky Otto. He makes a surging run down the left-hand side. Edmonds in front of him. Curry across. Otto takes it round the both of them. Little through ball to Steve Claridge. Claridge trying to take it past Dean Walling. Still has the chance and straight to Tony Kaye. Bounces down once in front of Kevin Francis. Grabbed quickly by Tony Kaye. A huge round of applause for Kaye. And the chance goes for Birmingham City. I think Tony Kay is going to build up a fan club here this afternoon. His handling has been excellent. OK, it was a bit of a stinger, uh, but he knew what he was doing, bounced it on the ground, and his reaction was superb, straight onto it. And I think Tony Kay, uh, at the moment, he, he's having an excellent game. The longer ball from Kay forward to Reeves, trying to flick it forward, but Ward and Barnett were there, and they get the ball back to Bennett. A long ball down through the middle now. Walling watches it, gets above Steve Claridge. Claridge holding his space, but there's no... Foul there, and Otto now with the ball, trying to step over it, a la Rod Thomas, and gets it to the back of the area, just leaves it, lays it back for Ward, who takes the shot. Wide right, and uh, Birmingham seemingly playing with a little bit more confidence now. I, I think it's a good battle between uh, Otto and uh, Darren Edmondson. Uh, um, Darren's sort of jockeying him at the moment and, and, and making him... He, he hasn't got past him yet, John, I don't think. Uh, I, I don't know how you feel Darren's playing him at the moment. Well, I think he's trying to just jockey him because he knows if he steps into him too quickly, Ricky Otto will run away from him with his pace. So he's playing quite well against him, and, and to be fair, Ricky Otto's coming inside quite a lot and, and laying things back, but I think I'd like to see him just a little bit tighter on Ricky Otto. Yeah. The Mexican wave now makes its way around the far side of the stand. A chance for Rob Thomas to run onto a loose ball, but too high and too far forward. And that's collected comfortably by Ian Bennett. The wave makes its way round now towards the Carlisle United supporters, and they don't want to spoil the fun. They continue it round their side of the ground. The Carlisle United substitutes warming up again. The wave still making its way around this ground now towards us. Do we all stand up in the commentary box and join in? Meanwhile, on the pitch... Mark Ward just taps the ball to his right-hand side in the Carlisle half, forward to Francis, now Claridge is level with the wave, Claridge trying to step inside the defenders, plays the ball out to Jonathan Hunt on the right side, a good cross in, Walling had it covered, heads it out towards David Rees, being climbed all over by Gary Poole, and a few words exchanged, 
and it's a free kick for Carlisle United. I got the impression the last five, ten minutes, if Carlisle get that longer ball forward over the top, they've got a chance of getting in behind the defence. All the worry about the Birmingham players being tall and being a threat at the back, but they actually look a little bit vulnerable. I think this is where the runs from, runs from midfield are going to be absolutely crucial because the timing has got to be right. If you can lift it over, the, if you can lift it over these defenders, then Carlisle, I've got a chance. And it's shown we've had two or three clear-cut chances. Uh, we're uh, seven minutes away from half-time. There's a, a little bit of a respite on the pitch in case you wonder why we're not commentating on the game. And uh, I think it's, it's Derek Mountfield that's receiving uh, a little bit of attention from uh, Peter Hampton. Or is it Paul Conway? Conway. It's Paul Conway. Uh, let's hope it's not that uh, dodgy ankle. But Paul Conway jogging back up to the halfway line as the wave continues to surge in front of us all around the ground. Both sets of supporters enjoying a carnival atmosphere and the atmosphere in the ground absolutely superb. Really is some stunning afternoon and I think you can gauge how hot it must be down there for the players by the number that came to get refreshment alongside the uh, benches while that free kick was waiting to be taken. In the middle now with Kevin Francis, taps it back to Peter Shearer, back out to Francis on the left wing. Kevin Francis has never won in four final appearances at Wembley, always Stockport County, I say final appearances, there were playoff matches as well, but he's never been on the winning side. Let's hope that's the fifth. <laughs> well, I don't w want to wish him any bad luck or ill feeling, but I hope it's the fifth. And now a free kick in the centre for Carlisle United. David Curry winning that one, the referee straight away blowing for the kick. And I wonder if Carlisle can capitalise on this one. Well, I think if Carlisle can keep playing the passing game, they've been through the defence when they get up there, and I think if they can keep doing that, they'll, they'll make chances against this back four. Free kick in the centre circle, the wave comes round again, the noise erupts. Edmondson will take this one, the line formed across the back of the penalty area. Chips it forward towards Walling, over his head, headed out by Daesh, picked up by Otto. Straight into space in the Carlisle United half, Claridge is chasing it, Edmondson back, chips it back, lobs it back to Tony Cage. He's outside of his area, but just calmly plays it forward to Edmondson. Claridge chasing back, but Edmondson's calm, right-footed, gets the ball down over halfway, but picked up on his chest by Gary Poole. Reeves across, Paul trying to get the ball forward, knocks it into touch. Mick Wadsworth urging everybody forward from the Carlisle United bench. And now Gallimore chasing forward with his throw for Carlisle United. Five minutes till half-time. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. The ball now flicked forward by Reeves, perhaps just off him, but Paul picks it up. It goes in the middle for Thomas, nice flick into the penalty area. Daesh with a back header to Ian Bennett. He's collected comfortably in the back of his six-yard box. And again, there's that probing ball from Carlisle which I think is make, that makes that defence look a little bit vulnerable. Yes, I think if we can keep our passing game going, get, get Red Thomas on the ball, get Dave Curry and Paul Conway on the ball, I think we can get a goal against this back four. Long, deep ball for Birmingham, flicked forward at the back of the Carlisle area by Francis, Edmondson across, gets the ball up to Thomas on halfway, nice control, gets it to David Curry, tries to thread it through for Thomas, but blocked. Hunt plays the ball down the right side, Francis chasing across, it awkwardly bounced, and now the free kick awarded to Carlisle United. And Derek Mount looks he looks absolutely tiny next to Kevin Francis. He, he, he does indeed. He, he really is six foot seven, is he? Six foot seven, dear me. And uh, I don't think he's, he hasn't really got a lot on the on the ground, but uh, they play to him on the ground. It's quite funny seeing him trying to control it. But uh, Carlisle United at the moment trying to work an attack, but it's Cooper clearing for Birmingham City. Once again, Claridge uh, wins the ball on the far side and builds up another attack for Birmingham City. And here it comes on the left-hand channel of midfield. The pass played in, but headed out by Derek Mountfield as far as Mark Ward in the middle. He plays it along the floor to Hunt. A little pushed ball forward for... Peter Shearer, who under pressure gets the shot wide and uh, right-hand side of the goal. Really uh, good defending again by Carlisle. I had this awful feeling earlier on that I might have said that Kevin France was seven foot six, but when you look at him, he <laughs> wouldn't surprise you at all. It wouldn't surprise me at all. But that, that was a good run uh, by the by the lad there. He, he got um, he, was, he showed great strength in shrugging off a couple of tackles, at, uh, but the tackles were just enough to put him off his uh, put him off his shot. Three minutes till half-time, that crucial period in the game where you don't want to concede a goal, but you also like to score one. And it's nil-nil. We want a goal, though we've seen a dramatic and interesting match. It's been exciting from start to finish. Plenty of fire and thunder, and the atmosphere in Wembley Stadium is electric as well. The supporters have not lost any 
enthusiasm at all, enthusiasm undimmed as we approach half-time. It's looking brighter out on the pitch as well, maybe there's a hint of sunshine breaking through as well. Otto now on the ball for Birmingham City in the middle, just loses control for a second, Conway takes it beautifully. Plays at the floor, along the floor into the middle to David Curry. Peter Shearer's across though, gets the ball away, picked back up by Hayward, back to Dean Walling. Out onto the far right touch line for Darren Edmondson, over halfway, almost hugging the line, comes inside a little bit. Rees plays the one-two with Edmondson, keeps it on the line, tries to thread it forward, but Barnett's cut it out for Birmingham City. Is he going to get the back pass to Ian Bennett? He can't do, the route's been cut back out by both Reeves and Conway as he has to turn and get the ball up towards halfway where it comes off the head of Derek Mountfield, comes back down again for Francis and Mountfield. Mountfield goes clattering to the floor, but no foul given, and then picked up at the back by Tony Gallimore. Pushes it forward to Stephen Hayward, being forced back by Jonathan Hunt, and he plays the back pass in the end to Tony Kay. Right-footed, gets hold of it well, high over halfway. It's going to drop down towards Barnett. Heads it forward to Francis, brings it down, plays it to his right to Claridge. Claridge trying to step inside and turn around Prokas, gets the ball back to Bagari Paul, a longer optimistic ball played forward, trying to dissect Mountfield and Walling, and Kevin Francis would have wanted to run onto that one, but it runs away from him and back into Tony Cage in the Carlisle United penalty area. He rolls the ball out into midfield, right-footed, takes the kick, straight down the left channel and into the Birmingham half, headed forward by Paul, flicked way forward by Gallimore towards Reeves. There's Barnett up behind him, no foul given, but the Ball back down with David Reeves again. Left hand edge of the penalty area. At the back, he plays the ball through for David Curry. Tries the little back heel. At least he had the confidence to try it, but it didn't come off that time. So no shortage of that in the Carlisle side. Then Conway picks it up on the far right-hand side. The tackle, though, from Peter Shearer. Birmingham City mount the counter-attack. Ricky Otto up to halfway. Gary Cooper behind him. Up front, Kevin Francis. Defenders back, though. Otto still on the ball. Now almost walking it. Taps it back to Barnett. In fact, to Shearer. Shearer plays the ball out to the far left-hand side. The cross comes in for Birmingham. Hunt over his head, drops for Mountfield, latches onto it, gets the ball forward down the left channel of midfield, back for Francis, turns on it, no power in the shot, and back to Tony Kay in the Carlisle United penalty area. Well, United defended really well there because at one time they were up against it. There was more blues than there was greens, but they, they baited their time, they didn't dive in, and Tony Kay now has a ball. He takes the kick, right for it. Veers away to the left, it's headed forward, flicked forward by Rod Thomas, picked back up by Gary Paul, played it through the centre to Steve Claridge, brings it down and plays it forward, and the flag stayed down, though Francis, I think, was running back offside, from offside, and realised then that, uh, I think if he touched it, the flag would have been up on the far side. Francis knew he was running back from an offside position and uh, effectively would have been the player involved there, so good decision, in fact, from the linesman not to wave the flag, in fact. And Kay gets a long, deep ball forward. It's flicked back by Barnett to the left-hand side. Picked up by Thomas. A chance now to capitalise on this movement down the left-hand side. But two defenders crowd Ryan David Curry. He can't get the ball away. Hunt gets it away for Birmingham, but plays it into Stephen Hayward. Appeals for handball. Question mark over that one. It looked as though he may have controlled it. And then Mountfield plays a very optimistic ball down the left-hand edge of the penalty area, which runs away just to the byline and Ian Bennett. Well, I think the first half, Nick, has gone in waves. The first few minutes obviously went to Birmingham and then all of a sudden Carlisle uh, created that chance with uh, Conway breaking through, crossing and Thomas missing. And then I, f I felt Carlisle had a good 10, 15-minute spell. Birmingham came back into it. And at the moment, I would say the half-time score, uh, 0-0, certainly it it's a right result. And uh, Carlisle United can go in at half-time full of confidence. Uh, here's Birmingham, a league above them, so-called so many million-pound players. Uh, and I think we've matched them man for man. Well, we've been playing a minute of injury time. It's Birmingham nil, Carlisle nil, as Derek was saying. And now perhaps we can snatch a goal for Carlisle just before the half-time interval. A 1-2 play between Curry and Thomas, but really too easy for the defenders at second division level to read and possibly first division next season. And Paul managed to snuff that chance out. Back to Tony Cade, the ball eventually makes its way. He gets a long clearance forward, flicked forward by Richard Prokas in the centre circle towards David Curry. Curry, I think Birmingham have done their job. They're marking him with up to two players and just giving Curry no space at all. I think they're well, well aware of how much threat David Curry can pose if they give him any time and space at the back of the penalty area. Birmingham trying to get the ball down forward, down the left-hand side again, though. Hayward was across and gets the ball back up to halfway towards Ward. Little tap out to the left touch line to Cooper. Back into Daesh. Left-footed, gets the ball down the left channel of midfield. Dean Walling heads the ball forward again down the right-hand side. Over the head of Gary Cooper. 
who really is about half the height of Kevin Francis, loses it to David, Fra David Reeves. Reeves runs away from the tackle from Hunt. Now there's a chance on for Carlo. Has he tried to take on too much? Should he have tried to pass the ball to the left to David Curry? But he's won the free kick, so I wonder. No, it's the half-time whistle. I thought for a I second was, it might have been a free kick. I was going to uh, say, Nick, that, that was never a free kick, but a half-time whistle, as you say. Half-time. Just looking for a bit of optimism from David Reeves at the end of the half, and he tried to take on too much there. A huge round of applause from everybody in the stadium. The two sides leave the field, they head off down towards the tunnel. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. The best chances for Carlisle in the fourth minute. Paul Conway's lovely little move, the cross in, and Thomas just missed, just fell over the shot and missed really effectively an open goal. In 16 minutes, uh, Steve Hayward, lovely floated free kick, just dropped over the top though of Dean Walling as he went in, powered ahead of the defenders and couldn't get his touch to take it past Ian Bennett. Tony Cage at the other end made an absolutely breathtaking save from Ricky Otto on the line almost in the 25th minute. But on the whole, it's been largely tactical battle and the two defences have been defending very well. And now we're just heading off for their half-time cup of tea. John, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I think even Stephen, Birmingham started off very well. Carlisle took five, ten minutes to settle. And then we came into the game and could have a couple of goals. Great chance for Rod Thomas, possibly a little bit behind them. But that was, I think, the best chance of the game. Tremendous save from uh, Tony Keg just after that. He kept the ball out when I don't know how, really how he did. It was a, a magnificent save. So I think both set of supporters are pleased with what they've seen so far and I draw the right result. And uh, now with Stephen Booth in the players' tunnel is the assistant coach, uh, Mervyn Day of Carlisle United. Mervyn, how do you think the uh, first half has gone? Um, the ball never seems to go out. It's such a big pitch. Um, you know, it's been end-to-end -end stuff. And, and to be honest, I mean, I thought we've probably just shaded it. Hey, he's made a magnificent save to keep us in the game, but by the same token, we've had two really clear-cut chances. A little bit calmer, maybe we should be one up at the minute. What will you and Mick be saying to the players at half-time? Just to keep it going, keep keep getting tight, keep trying to make them play long balls, and we'll try and play through them. And hopefully, you know, that will be enough for us. What do you see as the danger areas from Birmingham? Uh, Francis's height. <laughs> OK, good luck. Cheers. Many thanks to Stephen Booth in the tunnel. I think it was interesting there, John and Derek, what uh, Mervyn Day said about the long ball being played forward, try and keep that height up the front, which is something we picked up in the first half. Yes, that's right. Uh, and I, I think uh, it, it reminded me a little bit of that Chesterfield when it was a continuous barrage. But Birmingham are a good side. I mean, they're not, uh, don't get the impression that they are a long ball side. But as, as Mervyn says, I think that is the danger. The ball up to Francis and Francis flick-ons and really the flick-ons can go anywhere. Um, I think it is. I, I think Mervyn's right. It's even Stephen and with the... When you look at the clear-cut chances, it's got to go down that Carlisle probably will think that they should be one up. Well, there have been uh, chances. There have been some, uh, well, absolutely breathtaking pieces of play from individuals in the first half. And now crackers going off all over the place as the uh, band take their place in the middle. Alongside us in the commentary box is Graham Liver. And uh, Graham's thoughts on the first half? Yes, uh, very exciting uh, first half on, on four minutes, really. Uh, the uh, start of, of the match, Conway uh, managed to cross a ball in from the left-hand side and Rod Thomas really missed a sitter. And, and, and Derek, as he just goes to uh, pick up his microphone, that if, if Carlisle had scored, that would have just sent the Carlisle end just crazy. Yeah, I think that's right. It's just what you want, isn't it? I think everybody that comes down here would like to cheer a goal, a, uh, for, uh, a goal for Carlisle United at Wembley. Uh, and that would have been an ideal start, an ideal opportunity. Uh, and uh, I don't know, as John says, maybe just that fraction behind him. But again, coming back to that move, I am a little surprised. And I thought Paul may have tried a cross shot. I, I think the, it was all set up for him. Well, because with the cross shot, the goalkeeper would have had to have gone down for the left. And if he had touched it aside, there was Rod Thomas, hopefully, for the, to pick up the pieces. Can I just say that I think we, what we've got to do is take confidence from, for the second half from mm. your posture in the press box here, Derek, is yeah. casually standing up with a cigar and looking very, very <laughs> much at ease. As though everything well, is going swimmingly well, well, and I think we've got to take heart from that. I think it is, I don't think. I, I mean, I, I come back to the point that uh, Birmingham City are high flyers. They, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of money they've spent on their team. Um, they, they've got an outstanding chance of, of winning the, the, the second division, and we've matched them. Um, we, the, the questions have been asked uh, uh, about Carlisle United. A, when we played Sunderland in that cup tie, and we, we, we should have beaten Sunderland at Roker Park. There was the, uh, the Wrexham tie. 
right. Oh, how are we going to get on against a good basic second division side? We beat them. Then there was Rotherham. We beat them. And then you've got, um, then, of course, that, that marvellous win at Crewe. And if Dario Grady says Carlisle United are one of the best teams he's seen this season, Carlisle United needn't fear anybody in the bottom league. Nobody. John alongside us, or John Halpin, the football and the community officer for Carlisle United, the former player himself, of course. You get the sense watching Birmingham City, though, that... Um, Carlisle are having to work quite hard in defence to cope with them. It's, it's looking as though if Birmingham were to step up a gear in some way or other, then they have got that extra bit of class. Yeah, I think as Mervyn Day said at half-time there, the big problem is going to be Kevin Francis. Haven't really seen him this half, his aerial threat hasn't really been a problem. But I think as the game goes on and lads get tired, don't pick up as well. I think you might see crosses come into the box and Kevin Francis may get on it one or two. And then it's up to Derek Mountfield and Dean Mullen to really show what they're made of. But I think at the other end of the pitch, you have the three front players at Carlisle United and if they keep the passing movements going I think they can work their way through and get goals against this back four. And Naban now uh, striking up uh, a familiar refrain, so familiar I can't think what it's called, but the uh, supporters really out there in, again in carnival attitude down on the terraces jigging about and having a whale of a time and uh, there the band just stops. Alongside is Graham Liver. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Nick. Yes, uh, very e exciting first half. And stick with BBC Radio Cumbria. We will have the entire second half live on the county's number one station for sport. This is a Wembley special all the way through until six o'clock on BBC Radio Cumbria. Well, as you heard a few moments ago, and just waiting to play, and uh, just waiting to play another tune for us is the Metropolitan Police Band. They're under the direction of Mr. Richard Walker. They are playing uh, music for us at half time. Let's go back into the tunnel and uh, see what the atmosphere is like there. And uh, join our reporter, Stephen Booth. I think the atmosphere is so loud in the tunnel that uh, Stephen can't hear us. Never mind, we'll carry on our, uh, our discussion here uh, in the in the commentary point. And uh, back to Nick Barnes. Yes, we've just been handed the uh, first half statistics and they make some uh, quite interesting reading in many ways. Birmingham City four corners to Carlisle's one. Uh, Birmingham four shots on target to Carlisle's none. Um, and shots off target, Birmingham three, Carlisle one. The, Impression then obviously is pressure from Birmingham City, but... Well, I think it, if you just come in and have a look at the statistics, you would say, well, Birmingham City well in front, but that doesn't show the full picture. I mean, Carrera United have at least 50% of the play and possibly two of the best chances in the game, so really statistics can be a little bit off-putting sometimes. And also uh, we can see free kicks taken seven and uh, for Birmingham, six for Carlisle, caught offside both sides once and throw-ins fairly even Stevens, 13 for Birmingham and uh, 15 for Carlisle United. I think we can possibly now go back to Stephen Booth who's down in the players tunnel and he can be forgiven for not being able to hear us. I know myself being down there the noise is so horrendously loud that it's very difficult to hear yourself think. Stephen. Hello Nick, I, I've never heard noise like it. When the teams ran out at the start of the match uh, it was just ringing in your ears. The noise here is absolutely incredible but the good news for Carlisle I suppose is that that noise from the Birmingham City fans is actually Sub, been subdued slightly during the first half. I think they don't think their team's performing ever so well and after Carlisle's bright opening there's certainly a few worried faces. Did the mood amongst the players seem to be good as they came off? I know you can't speak to them but you can see their faces there walking down the tunnel back to the dressing room. Do, they, do the Carlisle players look fairly optimistic? Well they were all deep in conversation there obviously uh, all making their own constructive comments. It was good to see uh, Rod Thomas uh, obviously uh, he was quite deeply immersed in conversation with David Reeves at half time. They're obviously maybe uh, scheming something for the second half. And it was nice to see that Rod Thomas's confidence is still there. That early miss might have dented it slightly, but he did uh, do ever so well to come back into the game after that. I mentioned the... Uh, I mean, oh, there goes the band again. Almost, almost like a cannon roll roar just gone off uh, in my headphones. That's uh, almost took my head off. Stephen, I was going to mention then the, uh, the temperature down there. Obviously, we're sitting at the back of the stand in the uh, shadow and the shade of the, the uh, main stadium here at Wembley, but you're down nearer the... Uh, actual cutting edge of things. Is, is it a hot afternoon? It is It is very warm down here at pitch level. And also the noise. I mean, I've sat in the stands at Wembley beforehand and it, it is a noisy place with the low roofs, but it's so focused on that central area that it's just like a wall of noise when the players come out of the tunnel. And uh, obviously something that must be very hard to cope with as a professional player, but they, they, I think the Carlisle players have coped with it admirably. Coming off at half-time, they look confident. Mick Wadsworth ran into the dressing room, uh, got there before the players. He obviously has a few things to say to them and wants to uh, use up the half-time as much as possible. Stephen Booth down in the...
players tunnel this afternoon. We're perhaps uh, five minutes, maybe less, away from the second half. And uh, oh, it all seems to be very, very relaxed down amongst the Carlisle United supporters, Derek. Everyone just having a, a lovely afternoon out at the moment. I suppose it's it's OK as well because it's goalless. Nobody's nobody's disappointed at the moment. At the moment, nobody's disappointed. But I'm, I'm just looking around and, and everybody's enjoying the day out. You know, that there's... And, Obviously, you can't hear what's being chanted out there, and you know you hear a lot of uh, not very nice things being chanted at football matches these days. But I honestly haven't heard anything like that. Both sets of supporters have been cheering their team on, and again, if I was giving points awards uh, to supporters, I would put Carlisle at the top of the list because if you look at 50,000 Birmingham and some 20 odd thousand Carlisle, uh, I think volume-wise, I would say they're at least level, and uh, I, I give credit to the Carlisle fans. They're really enjoying their day out. I wonder about a match like this when you've got an attendance in the region of uh, getting on for 80,000 for this final, uh, how well behaved everyone's been, the football's been superb, where it seems to be maybe penalising the team, if it does end as a draw at 90 minutes or, uh, and say extra time, maybe there's a case for a replay in a competition like this Yes, I think so, and maybe uh, maybe a replay uh, a little bit further north so that uh, you know, both teams don't have to travel uh, this far, mind you Birmingham's only a, an hour and a half away, mind but uh, yeah, I mean, once off showpiece and then uh, you can have a replay some other ground and uh, uh, demonstrate not just at Wembley, but demonstrate perhaps to other parts of the country that it is possible to get a large crowd in with no trouble, both sets of supporters enjoying themselves. And I think this is a great advert. Uh, I don't know whether it is going to get the, uh, the press profile it deserves, but uh, I think everybody should take note of both sets of supporters and congratulate them. I suppose it's interesting this weekend, there's been no Premiership fixtures. The First Division mm. fixtures were all yesterday and, of course, the other Ensley League fixtures. And uh, this is the only game taking place on the Sunday. It may indeed raise the profile. Yes, I, indeed. And I think that was a good point I heard you about the actual uh, cup itself, whether the winners of this should automatically get uh, uh, a, a place perhaps in a higher competition and make it like a link competition. Now, John, you'll know from uh, playing games yourself, I mean, we've been talking about the temperature in the first half and the size of the pitch. Mervyn Day mentioned the fact that the uh, ball never seems to go out because the pitch is so wide. Um, I wonder, in the second half, we're going to get a bit more space. Things starting to open up because the players are tiring. I think as the game goes on now, you'll see more space and you'll get more chances created in the second half. Players are beginning to tire now. One or two of the Carlisle players I've noticed have not just been much fit, maybe just beginning to tire that little bit. So hopefully they can get the half-time rest and get a, get a bit of liquid inside them and get back out for the second half again. Well, the play, two teams are now coming out for the second half. Birmingham the first out. And uh, the other interesting thing, of course, this half, Carlisle United will be attacking the goal behind which are the Carlisle United supporters. Well, that's right. Let's let's transfer our thoughts. That uh, Let's just say they're attacking the Warwick, Nick, because uh, I know they like to attack their own fans. But just a question to John, uh, who, who was a flying winger himself. Um, Ricky Otto, I mean, he's obviously got a lot of potential. He's up against a full-back. A lot was expected of Ricky. When it's like that at half-time, John, and you know the full-back is giving you a good game, would you try and change your tactic at all as a winger going at a full-back? Well, I think what you'll probably find is Ricky Otto may come a little bit deeper and try, to, try and pick the ball up deeper this half. He was getting it right up in the last third of the pitch, and Darren Edmondson done a tremendous job, and I'm pushing him inside all the time. What you don't want is, Darren, is Ricky Otto running at you at pace and getting that ball to the byline, and then that's where Kevin Francis comes into his own there, coming in at that back post to head things into the net. So I think Darren Edmondson's done a tremendous job yeah. against him. When it's like that, you wouldn't be tempted as a winger to change wings and try your luck on the other side? Well, possibly they may, they may try that just to try and see if they can get, if get something over on Tony Gallimo, but again, Tony Mar Gallimo's very quick, so I'd be mm. quite comfortable pushing him over there as well and let Tony have a go at him. Right. The band marches off, both teams now out on the field for the second half. There seems to be no substitutions at half-time. Carlisle playing now from left to right as we look down from the Royal Box stand here at Wembley Stadium. It's the Auto Windscreen Shield final. It's Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. And full second half coverage live on BBC Radio Cumbria. Birmingham City will kick off. They are playing in all blue. Carlisle in their deck chair away strip, the red, green and white stripes, the green shorts and white stockings. Birmingham line up with Ian Bennett in goal, Gary Poole, Gary Cooper, Mark Ward, Dave Barnett, Liam Daish, Jonathan Hunt, Steve Claridge, Kevin Francis, Ricky Otto and Peter Shearer. And for Carlisle United, it's Tony Cague, Darren Edmondson, Tony Gallimore, Dean Walling, Derek Mountfield, Paul Conway, Rod Thomas, David Curry, David Reeves, Steve Hayward and Richard Procast. The ball back with Tony Cague in the... Carlisle United penalty area, now that is away to our left in front of the tunnel, the famous players' tunnel here 
at Wembley Stadium in the country's capital. The ball headed forward from the Birmingham City half by Barnett, out to the far right-hand side to Poole. He plays the ball left-footed across the middle, swings it out towards Ricky Otto, but Edmondson's come forward, got the touch that takes it down to Paul Conway, just to make a little run up towards halfway. Otto back onto him, but Conway still has possession, plays it to his left in the centre circle to Richard Prokas. Back to Dean Walling, right-footed, a longer ball forward towards David Reeves. The header comes in from Daesh that takes the ball back, but Reeves is penalised for pushing in on Daesh, and it'll be a free kick to Birmingham City, just outside their own penalty area, perhaps 10-15 uh, yards in, down the left-hand channel of the midfield. Ian Bennett just throws the ball forward to take this kick for Birmingham City. £325,000 signing from Peterborough in 1993, and many of the Birmingham sides signed in 1993 as Barry Fry tried to make inroads into avoiding relegation from the first division, which they failed to avoid, but now about possibly to win their place back in that division. Now across from the far right-hand side, in towards Otto, he gets the touch, it takes it high in the air, still bobbling about in the box and taken away, scooped away from the figure of Steve Claridge, and then out towards Jonathan Hunt, whose shot goes well over the bar, and that chance misses, or escaped, for Birmingham City. And out behind for the goal kick to Carlisle United. So Barry Fry building the nucleus of the side in that year they got relegation, spending £800,000 on Ricky Otto, and... Uh, a number of players have cost in the region of 300 to 350,000 pounds against the Carlisle United side, who really two big money signings: 121,000 for David Reeves and 100,000 for Steve Hayward. But it's goalless at the moment at Wembley, a division or so apart. A kick, a clearance by Ian Bennett now for Birmingham City, long and deep. It's flicked forward by Kevin Francis down the far right hand side into touch. It's going to be a Carlisle United throw and it's going to be taken by Tony Gallimore. I wonder if there's a hint, possibly the longer ball being played by both sides. Yes, certainly by Birmingham. Uh, it was interesting, that last, uh, that last uh, incident in the Carlisle penalty area, that it was Ricky Otto that posed the aerial threat with Francis just behind him. Uh, and Otto had two chances there with his head. But uh, yes, m maybe you're right. But uh, certainly Carlisle United again trying the long ball up down the inside left channel, headed away uh, by Daesh. And again, Francis up, heading it forward and into touch. And over on that far right-hand side, as far as Birmingham look at this game, but it's a left-hand side throw for Carlisle United. Tony Gallimore in line with his own penalty area, takes the throw down the line, it's flicked forward on the touchline by Gary Paul. Comes back for Peter Shearer, swings the cross in, but it's headed away by Derek Mountfield, and Francis goes up and really just pulls Conway to the floor. Play goes on, Otto's picked up the ball, left side of midfield, just flicks the ball in towards Claridge. Dean Walling's across, heads the ball away to the right-hand side of the penalty area. A little push in the back of Rod Thomas, but Thomas tries to take the ball away and spins it back to Darren Edmondson, who's keen just to come across and pump the ball into touch down the Birmingham left. The throw taken quickly by Cooper. In it goes towards Hunt. He just flicks it to his right, but a bad ball because it's picked up by Prokas. Into Curry in midfield. Only one on him this time, and he steps out of the tackle as he played the ball forward down the right. It rolls into touch. And it's a Birmingham throw on the left, in midfield to Mark Ward, left channel of midfield. He taps it back to halfway. A longer ball forward from Daesh down into the Carlisle United penalty area, where it's picked up by Tony Cage. And right-footed, he gets the ball forward. It swings out to the left-hand side, chested down by David Reeves. Little tap back to Paul Conway, lifts the ball up in the air, and the header from Poole takes the ball forward, and it drops in the middle for Shearer, taps it back to Daesh, and he plays the ball again out to the right-hand side to Ward, and flicked out to the... Far right-hand side to Gary Poole. Now down into the Carlisle United half. It's played across by Hunter. Ricky Otto in space. Darren Edmondson's trying to block the move into the box. But Otto sidesteps and takes the shot. Oh, it skims the bar. And over it goes. And Otto just showing a flash of his brilliance there. Yes, I think so. That, that, was, uh, that was a flash of brilliance. He, he jock uh, Darren did well, awfully well. Made him come inside again. And uh, he possibly hit it with his wrong foot, which is his right. Uh, and just over the bar, thankfully, for uh, Carlisle United. But, uh, John, I was a bit disappointed he never got it on target there. Well, he'll be disappointed. I'm delighted he didn't ah, get it on sorry, target. Sorry, I'm delighted as well. <laughs> But I think Kalel just have to wear this little early pressure now. They've had five minutes for it, and Kalel just haven't found the passing again. So I think they need to just get the ball on the floor again and just settle down to start the second half. That must have been some interesting half-time team talks from the respective manager and director of coaching, Barry Fry and Mick Wadsworth. And now I wonder what's going to happen as Carlisle win a throw-in on the far left-hand side, halfway inside the Birmingham City half. Tony Gallimore will take this one. Thomas has come across. So will it be the shorter or the longer throw? A longer one towards Curry, but the defender was straight in the back of Curry and puts enough pressure on him to take the ball out eventually. 
And it'll be another throw to Carlisle United in almost exactly the same position, which Gallimore will take again at the second attempt. One always gets the feeling when it goes to Curry, this player's running in from straight away to give him no time on the ball. Now, Birmingham City get the ball back again. Hunt plays it forward towards Claridge. A little pass out to the right again as Hunt plays the long ball down through the centre. Francis bearing down on Walling. Maybe pushed him in the back and the referee agrees. And it's going to be a free kick to Carlisle United outside of their own penalty area, perhaps uh, 10 yards forward of the box. Taken short and quickly by Dan Edmondson to Steve Hayward. Hayward then lobs the ball forward down the right towards David Reeves. Surely Daesh may have been climbing on him, but the referee says no. But the ball comes back to Paul Conway. He pushes it forward, but it's headed away by Cooper and then picked up by Daesh, left-hand edge of the Birmingham penalty area. High in the air towards Francis again. He just backs into Dean Walling. Walling did enough, though, to take the ball round to Derek Mountford. And the ball played forward again. It goes over the head of Shearer. It's left for Curry. Now Reeves. He taps it to his left to Stephen Hayward, but uh, not enough movement in the ball to get it forward and away. And Birmingham City get the ball away themselves as Carlisle tried to create another triangle. The lads just haven't found that little passing movement. I see Peter Hampton uh, telling Steve Hayward just to step out and switch it there. It was very tight. They tried to um, eye the needle ball. So Carlisle just need to get the passing shoes on again and get back to what they were doing first half. Six minutes into the second half. It remains Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. Reeves with a ball down the right-hand edge of the Carlisle penalty area. Dace tries to clear it. It crashes into Curry. He keeps the ball in possession, but then Tackle comes in at the back and pushed forward. Otto tries to get it forward. Edmondson crashes in, and the ball into touch as a pigeon glides down over the centre circle. For a second, I thought it was going to land on the pitch, but maybe having second thoughts, gains height and heads up with its partner towards the players tunnel end of the ground now a throw on this left hand side for Birmingham City Cooper takes it flicked on by Francis for Claridge Claridge inside the Carlisle half now bundled over chips over the foot of Dean Walling the free kick is given and Ward takes it quickly chips it on to Jonathan Hunt brings it down well in the box turns inside Conway still got the ball tries to chip it across the front of the penalty area across the front of the goal and headed out and behind by Derek Mountfield well, that was a good header from Derek Mountfield there. I mean, Kevin Francis just looking at the back post and any slip at all and, and Big Francis would have scored. So, Kaleo really need to dig in now and, and weather this early storm. Corner then on the left-hand side for Birmingham City. Mark Ward goes across to take this one. Francis in the six-yard box. Otto at the left-hand edge of it, trying to lose Darren Edmondson. The ball goes towards the penalty spot again. Shearer tries to get the touch, crashes down onto the floor and Conway gets it out. and He releases the ball into touch on the far side. So it'll be a Birmingham City throw halfway inside the Carlisle United half. On the right-hand side, there's a big bouncy balloon of yellow, white, blue and red bobbling about on the far side. But the smaller ball back in play now. The cross comes in from Jonathan Hunt. It's going to run away from Otto, is it? Over his head, he has to back... Overhead kick back into the penalty area and cleared by Carlisle. And eventually Hayward gets the ball out up towards halfway and it rolls into touch on the far side. So this... Opening seven or eight minutes of the second half, and it's Birmingham applying the pressure and just trying to find the weak points in the Carlisle defence. The ball, though, back in the Birmingham half. Daesh plays the long ball down through the centre for Steve Claridge, but Dean Walling got the header in and gets the ball away. Down the Birmingham left now, Otto gets the ball back to Cooper, just scooped in, spooned in towards the back of the area for Francis, the overhead kick, but Walling gets that one ahead of Steve Claridge, gets the ball out, but back in again by Shearer. And now it's headed high in the air, and Otto goes for it with Rod Thomas. It spins away from both of them. They weren't sure where it had gone. Cooper, though, sees the ball go out of play, and it's going to be a Carlisle United throw down this right-hand side. I think you're right with the aerial threat. Certainly Birmingham uh, seem to be pumping higher balls up, but uh, Carlisle United have got a chance. Richard Prokas just outside the penalty area, up to David Reeves. David Reeves is blocked, and it's Bennett that brings it away from Birmingham. Bennett to Mark Ward, and Birmingham trying to build again. Long ball played down the right, it goes over the top of Derek Mountfield, it drops for Kevin Francis, Dean Walling has to do a good job just to get a foot in, but the ball takes itself out to the right side for Jonathan Hunt, trying to step inside the defender Gallimore, gets the ball back in the middle to Mark Ward, it's being shadowed by Steve Hayward and just taps it back to Gary Poole on the far right. A long ball, a longer ball played down to the right-hand edge of the penalty area, it goes past both Claridge and Walling and back to... Tony Cage, the Birmingham City supporters appealing for some sort of foul, but it wasn't given. There was no, I don't think, question of there being a foul there. And John, it strikes me at this level, Carlisle United don't get that second touch on the ball. Birmingham, it's one touch, you don't get a second chance. Yeah, it has to be spot on the first touch. If it isn't exactly right, then the Birmingham players will take it off you. Now, Thomas on the right side, inside the Birmingham half, through the middle to Paul Conway, steps out of the tackle, into the penalty area, goes over, and the referee says... Oh, no, he said goal kick. Paul Conway goes over on the right-hand side of the penalty box. 
he got up, he doesn't appeal, there's very little appeals from the Carlisle players, but huge roars from the Carlisle supporters, We're watching it back on the monitor, question mark over it. I'll tell you what, I've seen them given, I've seen them given. Yeah, to be fair, the referee he was right behind him there, he was right on the spot and didn't give it, at first actually I did think it was a penalty. Well, in fairness, Paul Conway didn't appeal, and the Carlisle United players... I think, the, fan, I think the fans think it's a penalty, Nick, do they? <laughs> <laughs> well, a moment of incident, but the goal remains intact. Birmingham nil, Carlisle nil, the ball out of play on the right-hand side as far as Carlisle are concerned. Conway trying to get the ball forward. Applause from Rod Thomas for the attempt, and it's going to be a throw to Birmingham City, halfway inside their own half. And, uh, the ball comes back up towards the halfway line. And it's uh, Gary Cooper with his throw for Birmingham City. Forward, flick forward by Francis. Then Claridge gets a touch. Otto lifts it over the defender Gallimore. Hunt was running onto it, but Prokas is back across. Bit of a tussle going on at the back of the box, but Gallimore brings it down wonderfully on the far side. He's got to try and take it away from Poole now, but he can't get the ball forward. He won't be able to get it back because Claridge has stopped the route back to the goalkeeper. And eventually turns and puts it into touch over on the far right-hand side. So it'll be a Birmingham throw. Birmingham all in blue, they get the ball back to Barnett. The cross comes in towards Kevin Francis, going for that height. He heads the ball down, but Edmondson gets a touch to take it out of the area. Curry for a moment almost looked as though he's going to bring it back in again, but he leaves it for Edmondson, tries to take it past Otto, but Otto's got the last touch. Takes it down this left touch line to Gary Cooper. Down the left to Steve Claridge, left-hand edge of the Carlisle penalty area, almost on the touch line, steps inside down Edmondson, his socks rolled down, gets the ball across the back of the box, but Curry takes it away. Only as far as Gary Paul on the far right side, in midfield. He plays it along the floor to Jonathan Hunt, who's gone across that far right touchline. Back to Paul, inside to Mark Ward, just inside the Carlisle half. Now to Barnett. Barnett comes forward, leaves it though for Hunt, the playmaker for Birmingham. Gets the ball out to the left-hand side now to Gary Cooper. Brings the ball down on the left. Just plays it along the floor, inside to Ricky Otto, inside the penalty area. Steps inside Conway, gets the cross in, the header comes down! Another good save from Kay! Oh! And Francis at the second attempt puts it on the netting on top. And Tony Cage has made another amazing save. Well, it, as I say, his fan club's building all the while. That was an absolute superb. I, I mean, I've always rated Tony Cage as a shot stopper, instant reaction. And, and this is a good example of it. Overcame the cross, header down, looked to be going in, and there was his head. And, and again, uh, there was a second chance for Francis, and he headed the ball over. But John. <laughs> well, that was a tremendous save. I mean, he didn't even have any time to look at it. It just it was instinctive. And again, Kevin Francis just shows his aerial power is tremendous in the end, and he, has, he is a definite threat. I think, like the first half, he felt that the ball was probably in the back of the net. Well, I certainly did. I thought that one looked all over a goal. He had every opportunity, but again, full credit to Tony Cake. He's, he kept us in the game, and Birmingham City at the moment, uh, Birmingham City at the moment are really putting Carlisle under the cos. Birmingham are attacking at the moment, but the linesman has had his flag up. Uh, they're going to complain that it was a, a late flag, but the linesman actually dropped his flag and he had to bend down and pick it up before he actually uh, caught the referee's attention. So the linesman there standing with his flag in the air, making the most of it, now he's got it back. And the free kick will be for Carlisle. Tony Cage will take it. He's rapidly becoming maybe the hero of the afternoon. And it's uh, in midfield on the left side. Plenty of heightened depth on this ball, flicked forward by David Curry, but Thomas won't get across to it. A little bit of confusion in the Birmingham defence, but they get it into midfield, it's in the air, comes back down for Procast to try and get a touch, but eventually it's uh, hurled forward by Barnett. Then it spins out to this left-hand side inside the Birmingham half. Cooper turns on it, gets it forward to halfway to Edmondson, brought it down nicely to Hayward. Edmondson gets it back, taps it back to Hayward on halfway, and Otto goes in and just left his foot in a little bit late. Hayward went over, and the free kick, though, awarded to Carlisle United and Mick Wadsworth down straight away to the touchline to issue a few instructions to Hayward and return the ball as well to Edmondson. The free kick taken short now to Hayward. Looks up, right footed, gets the height on it in the box towards David Reeves. A chance on it spins away from him. And Barnett's there to hook it away into touch on the far side. So Carlisle putting some pressure on now. A throw on the far side in line with the penalty area. Gallimore takes it. In it goes to Rod Thomas. Just flicks it back towards... Derek Mountfield tried to get the pass in the box, but cleared by Birmingham. Drops over Steve Hayward in midfield, but drops for Procas. He gets the ball forward, but picked up comfortably by 
Gary Cooper gets it down to Ricky Otto, trying to turn inside David Reeves, gets it back to Cooper, he thumps it forward, it's going to be headed forward now by Dean Walling, back from Steve Hayward to Dean Walling in his own half, steps inside Claridge, steps inside Francis, gets the ball to Edmondson in midfield, plays it across the left-hand side to Tony Gallimore, he's going to bring it up towards the halfway line, and will he opt for the longer pass? He opts for the longer pass, down towards Conway, but Barnett got above Conway and Curry, and Birmingham get possession back, walled over on the far side, a couple of yards in from touch, tries to step inside Rod Thomas, does so, and gets the ball back to Gary Paul on that far right side. Right footed, gets the ball right down towards Steve Claridge. He's got to run on to try and get away from Dean Walling. Right side of the penalty area, steps to try and take it inside. Does so, trying to jinx it in, trying to get it into Francis. Went behind Francis at the back of the six yard box and rolls away for Darren Edmondson to try and take this one out of defence. Chips it into the middle towards Paul Conway. Tries to chest it down. There's a Birmingham player on him straight away, but Conway battles away. Tries to get the ball back. There's a right old tussle going on now. And now Darren Edmondson and Mark Ward. Words being exchanged, pushing being exchanged, players rush in, David Reeves comes in to calm down Mark Ward, the referee's having a word with a pair of them now, and, uh, well, the excitement is getting to everybody. Well, just a little bit of tension boiling over there, a lot of lads running in, I've got nothing to do with it, just keep out the way, and the referee's sorting things out there. What does Dave Burgess say, Nick? Handbags? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly handbags, and the Carlisle supporters are now getting behind their own team, just trying to fire them up, a shake of hands between Edmondson and Ward and uh, play will resume with a free kick for Carlisle United just inside their own half, on the right hand side a couple of yards in from touch 17 minutes coming up on the clock it's Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil and uh, the ball flicked in towards the back of the area and a hopeful pump forward from Stephen Hayward at the back which really had to have been uh, a lot better than that if it was going to trouble Ian Bennett and out it goes behind for the goal kick. It's going to be a substitution, it's going to be for Birmingham City. The player coming off is Peter Shearer, and the player going on <laughs> is Louis Donoa. Louis Donoa, 33-year-old winger, £50,000 from Bristol City in uh, 1992. He's actually won a medal here at Wembley in the Milk Cup final for Norwich City in 1985, and he's now taken his place on the field in the 17th minute of the second half. So Peter Shearer goes off and Louis Donner comes on. And I wonder if that's because Shearer in midfield has perhaps been a little bit ineffective for Birmingham City. Doesn't seem to have had the play sewn up as much as Jonathan Hunt has. Well, he certainly hasn't been in it, uh, certainly not this second half. I, I, I thought Shearer was quite... He, he had some nice touches in the first half, but I think Birmingham really, uh, with the aerial power, they're looking for uh, perhaps somebody who, who's a, a midfield goal scorer. I know Donner, was, Donner has had his fair share of goals this season. Carlisle on the ball in midfield, Darren Edmondson to Steve Hayward, nice ball out to the right-hand side to Paul Conway, tries to clip it forward, but uh, Gary Cooper's across and read that one, gets the ball back up towards halfway, where Edmondson just gets ahead of Ricky Otto, gets the ball down the right-hand side to Curry, a nice little chip forward for Reeves, but he couldn't get to it, now back to Richard Prokas, now to David Reeves, stays on side, puts the cross in, but there's nobody there! And Barrett Gary Paul has to chase across the area to the far right side, and rescue Birmingham because David Reeves got behind the defenders if there'd been anybody there and the offside flag goes up for Kevin Francis at the far side and uh, the ball goes out of play it's going to be uh, Tony Cage is going to pick up play again for Carlisle United and now the Carlisle United supporters trying to get the uh, ball forward and uh, we believe that the substitution is actually uh, Paul Tate and not Louis Donner, do we John? Yeah, I think the substitution was Paul Tate. They've uh, seemingly swapped their numbers about. The player that came on was uh, blonde haired and it looks as though the uh, figure of Paul Tate may be on the box. We'll try and clear that one up. And now it's Steve Claridge plays the ball down the right side. Jonathan Hunt trying to run onto it but uh, Gallimore was across and taps the ball into touch on the far side. And uh, looks as though it's uh, Paul Tate on the field of play as Francis tries to get a header in, breaks away to the left hand side. It's going to be picked up by Evans, he's going to let it roll out behind. And uh, I think the uh, wave of feeling in the box is possibly that it's not Louis Donner, it's Paul Tate who's taken his place on the field. And the team sheets we've been handed have actually got the numbers in the wrong place. 
So before there's any more confusion, I just hope that Tate doesn't score. Let's hope not. And uh, Carlisle United seem to have weathered that uh, that opening 10-minute storm. They they came back at Birmingham, and uh, that was a lovely cross a little while ago by uh, by uh, David Reeves. And uh, Carlisle United perhaps a little bit disappointed. Nobody was in an advanced position. But here comes this man, uh, Otto again. Uh, well policed this time by uh, Hayward, but a throw into Birmingham, some three, four yards from the uh, from the touch line. And again, I wonder if we're going to have a long throw. Uh, Hayward uh, just timely, little interception, took the ball out, and Gary Cooper's come down this left side, a yard or so up from the corner flag to take this throw for Birmingham City. He's got uh, players near him, but they're all being marked, and it comes back to Tate. He's just seen the ball roll out, but uh, the last touch came from Conway, and it's going to be. In fact, a Carlisle United throw. I thought indeed it came off the uh, substitute, and in it goes into touch, and Edmondson will get this throw for Carlisle United. Forward it goes to David Rees, plays it inside to Steve Hayward, tries to lift the ball up and over the halfway line into the Birmingham half, but he's been picked up by Mark Ward, gets it along to the halfway line, the centre circle. The substitute plays it into Jonathan Hunt again, plays it out to his far right hand side, picked up there by Kevin Francis. Francis just falls over the ball. And that's given Derek Mountford a chance to get back in. In fact, that Mountford even wins a free kick there. He looks and very awkward, doesn't he, Francis, when he's got the ball. He's such a tall player. The, the small ball around his feet, it looks so... It, it looks unusual, but uh, he certainly made a mess of it, Thank you, thankfully for Carlisle's point of view. Keg then, with this free kick, halfway through the second half. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. And... Birmingham get the ball forward through Cooper into the Carlisle half, but Edmondson's there, he seems all fired up now and gets the ball to Hayward, plays it out to David Reeves on the touchline, plays the ball through, trying to get it past Cooper, but uh, just did enough to bring the ball down and eventually it crashes off Paul Conway. And it's going to be a throw down by the right-hand corner flag, but it's going to be a Birmingham City throw on the left-hand side, which Gary Cooper will come back to take for the team in blue. David Curry trying to block off the route back to the goalkeeper. And uh, Bennett, though, comes back out, made a quick surging run from his six-yard box and gets the ball back for Birmingham City. Now it's out on the far right-hand side. Gary Poole coming forward, plays it to Jonathan Hunt on the right side, tries to cut it down the right channel, but headed forward by Gallimore. Picked up again in midfield, though, by Mark Ward. Plays it out to the right side to Gary Poole again. Looking up, it's going to be the longer cross. In it comes, right-footed towards Kevin Francis. He heads the ball forward. Cage's going to come for this one called for it, ran across and took it comfortably at the back of the six-yard box. I wonder if we're going to see possibly Jeff Thorpe coming on shortly for Carlisle United to give that little bit of pace, that little bit of urgency, run at defences. Yes, that's right. I, I, th I think the longer the game goes on, Carlisle have got to look at, at a way uh, of changing their tactics, see if they can squeeze a goal from somewhere. And certainly Jeff Thorpe, um, super sub, as, as we call him, with the last 20, 25 minutes maybe, he might be just the man. But that's a lovely move. Reeves, Conway, back to Reeves in the penalty area. Reeves tries to go again. Conway gets in, but oh, just didn't quite get hold of his shot, didn't quite get hold of his shot and the ball bobbled through to Ian Bennett who gratefully pounced on it from Birmingham's point of view but again good one too with Conway and Reeves and again Conway the creator again Well wouldn't it have been amazing if that had been a goal because that was a lovely lovely move from Carlisle United and John, it makes you think, what happens if Carlisle run at the defenders, run at the defenders like that and get in the penalty area? Well, that's it. I think if we can just put pressure on the back four, get the, get the, the ball up to the front lads and let Conway and, and Dave Curry and Rod Thomas do their own thing. Reeves again, trying to run down the left-hand edge of the penalty area. Tried to get the cross in, blocked by two defenders. The ball out and the touch on the far left-hand side for Carlisle. Gallimore left for the throw by Rod Thomas and Thomas now just sauntering into the edge of the box. Gallimore then, throw on the left for Carlisle, Thomas trying to lose his marker, Curry too, the ball goes to David Curry, back out to Gallimore on the left-hand side, but he loses out to the figure of Hunt, he's not happy with the tackle, but the ball comes forward down the right and knocked out into touch, it's going to be a Birmingham City throw, and the chance perhaps passes again for Carlisle United, 24 minutes have passed in the second half, it's Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil, we're listening to live coverage of the Auto Windscreens final, on BBC Radio Cymru, remember the Scores a level at full time, it'll be sudden death extra time. Whoever gets the goal wins the competition, and if it's still level after that, it'll be penalties. Now, Birmingham City, long ball forward from Daesh inside his own half, headed away in his Carlisle half by Derek Mountfield to Ward in midfield, the diminutive figure, but he gets the ball out to the left-hand side to Ricky Otto, running it down Edmondson, takes it down the left-hand edge of the penalty area, being forced down towards the byline, plays the ball back, though, 
and that's picked up by Stephen Hayward for Carlisle United and he comes forward down the right hand side looking for options there's Gallimore calling for it in space on the far left hand side a lovely dummy from David Curry David Rees runs onto the ball he's going to try and take it inside the defenders two defenders he needs help through to Curry left by Curry to Thomas edge of the area tries to tap it through through the defenders through the defenders the flags up on the far side David Reeves just wandered offside and there's some dazzling display from Carlisle United. That was a lovely move by Curry, a nice flick to David Reeves, but unfortunately David needed somebody in the middle and he looked up and he was on his own and the, by the time they arrived the, the cover had gone but uh, I thought Rod might have tried a shot there from about 18 yards, I thought he might have had a crack. We need that little bit of magic, don't we? Somebody's got to try something different. Well, certainly some encouraging play in the last 10 minutes, twice Carlisle have shown when they run at the defenders and a little bit of confidence they've taken the ball past them Hayward just sees the ball spinning off Tate into touchdown this left hand side inside the Carlisle United half so a throw to Birmingham City it's going to be taken by Gary Cooper and he's looking for Ricky Otto picks him up down the line back to Cooper forward again to Claridge at the back of the area Dean Walling just doing enough to force Claridge back but Claridge turns he's got Reeves coming across takes the ball away from him taps it to his right at the back of the area to Otto Otto tries the pass across the far post to Francis hooks it back in headed away by Tony Gallimore into the box again for Birmingham a shot comes in and that spins just wide of the left hand upright and uh, well again close but Carlisle defending well Tremendous there, yeah, held the box well, great shot from the right back. Just hit it as it dropped him, and I don't think it was too far away. I don't think Tony Cade would have saved that. It, it, it really was a snapshot, and I think uh, it probably probably going wider than what it, what it looked. We just looked at it on the monitor, and it was wide. So, uh, and the way Tony Cade's playing, he had that covered anyway, John. <laughs> Tony Cade's had an outstanding game this afternoon. He's pulled off two absolutely first-class saves who put him in the Premiership, let alone the divisions that uh, this final is played for, the second and third divisions, the third and fourth, as it was when the final the competition was introduced all those years back as the Associate Members' Cup. And now 76,000 in Wembley Stadium to see Birmingham City and Carlisle United play out the 94-95 final, and at the moment it's goalless. A free kick for Tony Keig in the Carlisle half, long and deep towards the back of the Birmingham box, Back out into midfield, Hayward misses it, it's going to drop for Francis, but Edmondson, Edmondson slides in, gets the ball back to Dean Walling. The ball played deep into the Birmingham half, into the Birmingham box. It's going to come out for Thomas on the left-hand side. Three defenders around him, he's still got the ball. He's trying to take it out to the touchline, tries to take it out, comes back off him, and it's going to be a Birmingham City throw on the far side in line with their own penalty area. Curry trying to block the route back to Ian Bennett in the Birmingham goal. So a throw then for Gary Poole, down the right touchline, over the head of Hunt, drops for Tony Gallimore, brings it inside of Hunt, and it looks as though the substitution may well be made by Carlisle United. Jeff Thorpe is taking his tracksuit off and uh, looks set to come on in the next five minutes. The ball played out to the right-hand side by Hayward, is intercepted by Gary Cooper, and it's uh, left and knocked into touch by Cooper, couldn't control it. So a throw for Carlisle halfway inside the Birmingham half. Short to Reeves, back to Edmondson, the throw taker. Again, down the line towards Rees. Back, though, and Otto gets a touch, but takes it in midfield to Steve Hayward. He loses it for a minute, and then Hayward manages to get a touch, but the referee's blown for a free kick to Birmingham City at the back. They hold their line of four, and uh, Ian Bennett will probably come out to take this free kick for Birmingham City. The question mark is, I suppose, who do you take off in the Carlisle side? That's just what I was going to say to you, Nick. Are we going to have a little flutter along here as to who comes off? Any thoughts, John? It's an interesting question, actually. <laughs> it's very difficult. It's a difficult choice because everybody to a man has been magnificent this afternoon. Yeah. I, th uh, I, I think he's, he's thinking may possibly be one of the lads that's maybe lacking a little bit of match fit fitness more than anything else. Uh, I think my money actually possibly be on Richard Procast in the middle. Uh, Although he's been... Uh, he's had a knocking injury. He's had a problem with his right um, back of his ankle. I wonder if they'll just be almost a direct replacement and just ask... Thorpe to run forward at the defences. Curry picks the ball up for Carlisle. He's got Reeves in space on the right, almost in space. There are defenders back across, but Curry forced back into midfield, back towards the halfway line, the back of the centre circle now in the Birmingham half. Comes across, has to make the pass quickly because Francis is coming in quickly. Goes to Hayward and back to Dean Walling on the halfway line. Walling the long ball down to the right-hand edge of the penalty area, but it drips in, drops into space for Gary Cooper. He shepherds the ball out. And uh, there's a lot of antagonism from Darren Edmondson. And it's going to be a throw, or possibly the foul down there for Birmingham City, just a few yards up from the corner flag. I think it's the free kick. I think Dan Edmondson a little bit over-exuberant in the uh, tackle. The attendance has been announced this afternoon as 76,663. 
which is absolutely phenomenal. And that makes for... it more than the Liverpool Bolton final. Absolutely superb advert for both clubs. And they've seen a superb advert for football as well. The display this afternoon from both teams has been excellent. First class football, but no goals. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil, and only a quarter of an hour remains of this match. And we'll go into extra time when one goal could decide it, or will decide it if needs be. And now the ball again knocked into touch down this left side. And John, in a situation like this, 15, 10 minutes left, do you defend in the hope that you don't give away that goal, or do you push forward in the hope of getting the goal? Well, I think you have to make sure at the back, first of all, that you don't lose a goal. That's the most important thing, because possibly over the 90 minutes, one goal could win it now. So I think you have to make sure, first and foremost, you don't lose a goal, and then anything you get going forward is a bonus. So I wonder if we're looking as Jeff Thorpe as the ace in the sleeve for Carlisle United to come on and get one of those remarkable goals he's been scoring this season for Carlisle United in the third division. Super sub. Not on yet, but he's warming up. Tracksuit bottoms are off. And uh, I don't think it'll be too long. There's, uh, I think, a second substitution possibly about to be made for Birmingham City as well. They're holding either the nine or the six. I suspect it's possibly the nine. I don't know if Francis is running out of match fitness but uh, the number's been put back on the bench for just the moment. Now Curry picks up the ball in the midfield in the Birmingham half, tries to get the ball forward, but Barnett's out and gets the ball down this left-hand side. Otto comes in for the header with Darren Edmondson. Almost a clash of heads, but the ball drops for Steve Hayward. Forward down the line to Paul Conway. Rides one tackle, skips the next one. Gets the ball in the middle to Richard Prokas. He's making the run down through the middle now. Takes the shot himself, and it just spins away the right-hand side of the upright. And Richard Prokas just looking for a little bit of glory then. And maybe uh, if he was the substitution, trying to keep his place on the field. That's right, yeah. I, th I think Richard did right. Uh, it opened up for him. The defenders backed off. Um, full credit to the wide players because they took the defenders with them, allowing Richard to go into that space. Uh, and he did, he did exceptionally well to, to have the shot. But the substitute's coming on, and then uh, the big tall figure of Kevin Francis is coming off. Now, I would say that would take a little bit of pressure off the, uh, off the Carlisle defence. Uh, and coming on um, is uh, Louis Donawa. Well, that's a surprise substitution now because he's always yeah. a threat in the air and possibly he has had an knocker, he's lacking a little bit of match fitness, but it is still a surprise substitution. I think uh, I, I thought I heard boos from the Birmingham supporters when he was taken off then, so it's not necessarily a decision that's gone down well with them either, but uh, who knows, Barry Fry, he could have pulled out an inspired substitution himself. Maybe Donawa is the super sub for Birmingham City. Both the... Uh, he and Jeff Thorpe, if he comes on, have got time running out. Jeff Thorpe seems to have, uh, for the moment, not going to get his chance in the last 10 minutes. We've got uh, 12 minutes left. Birmingham nil, Carlisle nil. And Birmingham, interesting as well, interestingly as well, have used both their substitutes if this goes to extra time. And the ball rolls out in front of Donoro on the far side. It's going to be a Carlisle throw, almost in line with their own penalty area. I've lost sight of Jeff Thorpe now, so whether... The uh, substitution is imminent because all the Carlisle bench have sat back down again. And uh, I wonder if they've decided just to watch how things pan out in this ensuing five or six minutes. The ball played forward up towards halfway. It comes back in midfield to Stephen Hayward. He makes a little burst of a run, plays the ball out to the right-hand side to Thomas. There's space opening up. He just couldn't control it enough to take the ball forward. And it's picked up by Ricky Otto on halfway. Thomas has to chase back onto Otto. He's chased back and he's taken the ball off him. And he takes it off well. He turns round and gets the ball down the right-hand side now. Edmondson's making the run forward. Conway wants the ball played through. Oh! Edmondson tried to, but blocked by the defender. And eventually the ball taken out by Daesh. And it's going to be a Birmingham throw, though, because the last touch off Darren Edmondson. Darren's fired up, isn't he? I think he's having a tremendous game. <laughs> he certainly doesn't want this occasion to pass him by. And he doesn't need any adrenaline rush. He is very, very fired up. The throw comes in from Cooper, along halfway to Ward. He plays it again out to the far right-hand side to Gary Poole. He brings the ball down, and now he's got space to play it into the middle to Mark Ward. Steve Hayward's come out, but the ball played across the left. Now to Gary Cooper, where Rees puts a bit of pressure on, but the ball down the line to Otto, and the ball actually takes a touch out. Otto takes the throw towards Gary Cooper, and the defender back is David Rees. The ball goes behind and out. It's going to be a corner on the left for Birmingham City. We haven't had one of these for a little while, and this will be dangerous. Yes, I think it is. Now, it's obviously still going to be dangerous, but what with Fred France is not there to pick it up, it'll be interesting to see uh, who he heads for, but there's still an awful lot of danger. And here it comes, in-swinging corner kick. And Tate is the corner taker this time. Again, it goes towards the penalty spot, which seems to be a well-rehearsed move. Claridge turns on it on the six-yard line. 
on the edge of the six-yard box. And again, Cade's down to make a very good reaction save at the far post. Claridge just getting that little bit of space and managing to turn on it. But Cade found his place well and fell on the ball at the post. And that chance just snuffed out as far as Birmingham City are concerned. Under ten minutes to go now, with a little bit of extra time, of injury time. And it's Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil, in front of over 76,000 at Wembley Stadium. And you're listening to it all live on BBC Radio Cumbria. As the ball comes back over halfway, and substitute Louis Donua, who tall himself, can't control the ball, and it's into touch. And it's going to be a Carlisle United throw on the right-hand side, just on halfway. It goes down the line to Conway. He chests it down and flicks it over his head, down the right side. Thomas isn't going to get to it before Liam Daish. And Daish just knocks the ball into touch on this right-hand side. So it's a, a chance for Carlisle to put some pressure again on the box. Edmondson with the throw, short to Thomas, back to Edmondson on the line. Otto's in front of him, comes down, gets the cross in, there's a chance, Conway left it, tried to play the dummy, and eventually it's headed out by Barnett. Nice play by Conway, yeah. but just too many defenders and there. And again, full credit to Darren, he loves coming forward, doesn't he? But I'm just wondering, Birmingham, to me, look a little bit lackadaisical. They don't seem as fired up as Carlisle. And it's an in-swinging corner kick. David Curry's going to take it. Uh, and certainly you know, all the crowd, we know who they want to score. It's Dino. And here comes Curry with the cross. Curry left-footed towards the far post. There's a chance. The keeper loses it. And then he comes out and grabs it in the second attempt. Nobody there, though, to get a foot to the ball for Carlisle and get the ball in the back of the net. It remains Birmingham nil, Carlisle nil. And Birmingham trying to swift counter-attack with Louis Donova down the right side. He's going to try and take it inside Tony Gallimore. He gets the cross in towards Claridge over Claridge's head. And Curry really needlessly heads the ball behind for the corner when he was in plenty of space. And perhaps could have brought that one down and headed it away into safety on the touchline because Birmingham get the corner on the left-hand side, which Tate will take. Hunt's come across as well, so will it be a shorter one? Thomas has come across to guard that little part of the ground, but Hunt now wanders back away again. So Tate at the left-hand corner, Ricky Otto on the penalty spot, Claridge in the six-yard box, Donua in the six-yard box as well. Gary Paul at the back of the box, Liam Dace is in the box, and Jonathan Hunt's at the back as well with Rob Thomas. The corner comes in, swings towards the far post, the header comes in, and it's over the bar from Donua, the substitute. Dropped beautifully for him. He just had to power it under the bar. He put it over. Well, how did he miss that one? That, that was a guilt-edged opportunity. Tremendous header from the, from the guy at the back. He headed it right back into the danger area, and all the lad had to do was just tap it in. And I think he, he, he went for glory with the power header uh, rather than, 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 just, than just tapping it, because uh, that was a guilt-edged opportunity. Uh, it's going through my mind. There's a little bit of tension I can feel creeping, uh, certainly around the Carlisle supporters. And when it's nil-nil like this, you don't. the last thing you want to do is to lose a final in the last few minutes but uh, let's hope it's Carlisle United that can get the all-important goal well the noise is from the Carlisle United supporters trying to get behind their team a throw for Carlisle on halfway on the right-hand side Edmondson will take this one looking down the line trying to find pick out someone who's not being closely marked down the ball goes towards Curry drops over his head lost by Cooper Curry tries to run onto it but Daish is behind and he just Flicks the ball up into touch on this right side again for Darren Edmondson. Edmondson then with the throw into Hayward. Back out to Edmondson on the line. Takes it inside Otto beautifully. Tries to make the run himself. Tries to take it through. Gets through. Gets the cross into towards the box. But Barnett heads it out. Only as far as Hayward. Hayward tries the shot. Spins away. Lifts up and takes it over and away beyond the upright and the angle of the bar. But lovely play from Darren Edmondson, he is fired up. Tremendous round of applause for Darren, and this second half, if there's one player that epitomises in the spirit of Carlisle United, it's Darren in this second half, and he, he's just responding to the occasion, I think, and he, he, absolutely marvellous. And I think Hayward did right to have the shot. The ball in the air, flicked forward by Donawa to Ricky Otto down the left side, coming towards the back of the Carlisle penalty area. Otto checks, looks up, right-footed, swings the cross in, it's going to go well over the top of everybody. And Gallimore is being chased back by Donawa, gets the ball down to Thomas on the left-hand side. Thomas now trying to make a surging run into the middle. Does so, creates some space for himself. Conway and Reeves are forward with Procast. Thomas tries a little jinx, trying to take it past Mark Wall, gets it through the middle to David Reeves. Reeves gets it forward to Richard Procast, down the left side, towards the left touchline. Procast has to now try and find a way through, just stabs it back though to Gallimore, steps on the ball, plays it right to Hayward. Hayward looks up, chips it down the right side, 
right foot down the left hand edge of the penalty area. Paul gets the ball on his chest for Birmingham, turns, gets it back up towards halfway where Mountfield's there and he gets the ball to Gallimore. Gallimore then gets the ball, sends it down the left touch line and it's going to bounce down towards the corner flag where Reeves chases it but just can't keep it in and it's behind, I think possibly for the goal kick as Ian Bennett's just making the mark on the six yard line. This last four minutes, five minutes is going to be tense. Well, I think as we've said over the 90 minutes, Nick, if we can just keep getting at this back four and keep turning at them, as Dan Edinson showed there with a magnificent run, they're not happy when players are running at them, the Birmingham back four, and if we can keep doing that, I still think we can get it out of the game. I, I don't think Birmingham look, look to be together as a unit out there. I know it's always a dangerous thing to say because you know what probably will happen next, but uh, to, to, to me, they're not together like Carlisle. Carlisle are playing a team, working for each other, uh, but here come Birmingham again, and again, a lackadaisical ball forward. They don't seem to be looking and, uh, and, and wanting the ball from the from, from their from their fellow player it's an interesting point which has been made to me by others uh, about Birmingham is they, they are individuals they don't play as a team unit but uh, how is your heart after Rochdale how do you fancy 30 minutes or less of extra time and sudden death I'll be quite honest I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the game I, I've just got I've just got that sneaky feeling that, that this is going to be our day I, I have honestly I just think Carlisle might just snatch it whether it's going to be injury time or not I don't know but I think they've played well enough there's uh, great skills going on out there Tony Gallimore's distinguished himself and here comes the through ball but uh, that one was cut out substitute for Birmingham City now uh, trying to create it's Paul Tate um, over on the far side it's Claridge Claridge going for the cross the cross comes in and the substitute once again Louis Donawa heads over when Nick possibly should have done better possibly a difficult one though plenty of height on the ball the defender was on him as well I think he was stretched at that one Nick to be fair to him but that was another chance for Birmingham City there oh. and you just wonder if Francis had been on the pitch would he have gotten the end of that you've just taken what I was going to say John if that was Francis coming in then uh, I think really that, that must have been a goal but yes you're right he was stretching Two minutes, Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. We're looking at the moment that we're going to go into sudden death extra time. Birmingham on the ball, Jonathan Hunt in the middle, plays the ball out to the right-hand side. Gary Paul gets it down the right channel to Donua, the substitute, down the right edge of the area, gets the cross in, is drifting away and behind. It's a goal kick to Carlisle United. Darren Edmondson catches the ball and just spins it behind him now for Tony Cage. Birmingham have played both of their substitutes. Carlisle have played none of theirs. I say both in the sense of the on-field rather than the goalkeepers. So Carlisle have still got Jamie Robinson and Jeff Thorpe to come on if needs be, but they need them in extra time. Cave then with the goal kick. It swings to the right, over halfway. Otto gets the touch forward, comes back to Otto. Left-footed gets it down the left channel of midfield. Dean Walling climbs over the back of Claridge. And the ball into touch and the referee says no foul, or does he? Has he given the foul? Yes, he has. So Birmingham City have got this free kick taken quickly, trying to catch the Carlisle defence unawares. Ward switches the play right out to the far right side to Gary Paul. Swings in the cross towards Liam Daish, gets the header and takes it behind. And it's going to be another goal kick as everybody surges forward to try and get this goal before the 90 minutes are up. But we've only got 1 minute and 45 seconds to play of the normal 90 minutes. And Cage has the goal kick for Carlisle United. As the Carlisle supporters again try and get behind the Carlisle team for that one last effort before this game goes into sudden death extra time. The ball forward down the right. Otto climbs over Conway but loses it. Thomas picks it up, steps inside Gary Cooper, gets the space, steps inside another tackle, then show too much of the ball to Mark Ward. Birmingham get it back. Tate gets the ball out to the left-hand side to Cooper. And Cooper sends the ball down the line towards Claridge. Dean Walling's taking a tumble with Donawa in the middle. Claridge still on the ball, tries to loop it through to Paul Tate. But robbed by Steve Hayward. Hayward being forced down the line and eventually plays the ball forward. It crashes off Paul Tate and it's going to be a throw on the right-hand side for Carlisle United. Dean Walling seems to be up, seems to be all right, pulls his socks up. And Darren Edmondson will take this throw for Carlisle forward to Hayward, back to Edmondson, across into the middle for Tony Gallimore to chase, still inside his own half, time now running out, 30 seconds, it's nil-nil, we're looking at sudden death, extra time, Richard Prokast turns and plays the ball to his right, to Dean Walling, still halfway inside the Carlisle half, played down through the centre by Walling, a chase across for David Rees, Barnett got there and plays a long ball down into touch, down the Birmingham left, the Carlisle right, so Darren Edmondson will take this throw as Claridge, one sock down, one sock up, lopes back towards the penalty area to try and block the route back to 
Tony Cage. Edmondson gets the ball back. He's going to take this throw down the right for Carlisle. Reeves is sauntering about, round about Ricky Otto. And eventually the ball goes down the line, over the head of Reeves, flicked away by Prokas and Cooper, and picked up in midfield by Paul Conway. Turns on Mark Ward and wins the free kick. Ward in a little bit too extravagantly, and the free kick goes to Carlisle on the halfway line. We've played the 90 minutes, we're into injury time. Free kick just inside the Carlisle half for Darren Edmondson. Everybody heading forward. Keg is outside of his penalty area, and Edmondson now just arms in the air, just showing what he wants to do. Right-footed, swings the ball into the penalty area. Curry backing off the keeper. Oh. Keeper punches the ball out. Hayward tries to get the shot, comes off the foot, high in the air, and spins away out behind. And afraid we're going to have sudden death, extra time. Full time is up. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. And we'll have, well, it could be anything between a minute and 30 minutes of extra time. Whoever scores first wins the trophy. What, what interests me here now, I'm bringing you in, John, how do you play tactics? Uh, I mean, do you go for goal? Do you defend it? Or what, what do you do in a sudden death? Very interesting. I, I don't actually know what the answer to that one is, to be honest with you. Um, I think, as we've said before, the main, the, main reason, the, the main idea is to keep it tight at the back and anything you get forward is going to bonus, but let's hope it doesn't go to a penalty shootout. I wouldn't like to see it going like No, that, well, that's true. It, 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 but there again, you could say this is a form of penalty shootout, <laughs> isn't it? But uh, certainly over the 90 minutes, Carlisle have distinguished themselves. Uh, they've played exceptionally well. And uh, the crowd, you can hear the crowd. Birmingham City supporters are a little bit subdued. And again, I think the Birmingham players expected probably to win this. And uh, we've matched them. I think totally on the field of play, it's been an outstanding final, outstanding 90 minutes. People will often look back and see nil-nil. Well, I bet that was a dour final, but it certainly hasn't been anything of the sort. It's been some top-class quality football, and um, the supporters really still in good voice. The applauding, the cheering, the trying to back the players has gone on throughout this uh, 90 minutes by Carlisle, and they're still just as fired up now. Now, I wonder how much psychology will play a part. I think I've mentioned that see now Nick when um, Mick Wadsworth decides to bring a substitute on where he'll bring him on straight away where he'll wait five minutes because as you say the game could last a minute or it could last 30 minutes so he may decide just to change it straight away he has already actually Richard Prokas has just shaken hands with Jeff Thorpe Jeff Thorpe is taking his top off and Bill Bezik now is having a word with uh, Richard I think that is the substitution I think they've decided to make that for the start of extra time and uh, it looks as though I may be wrong but it looks as though Richard Prokas has come off for Jeff Thorpe, they're all wishing Jeff Thorpe luck and uh, the two groups of players in the middle now just having a breather and a rest. Alongside me to our left is Graham Liver. What an exciting game, definitely not a, a, bo a bore draw this, nil-nil here at Wembley Stadium. We will bring you all the extra time, or uh, as the Football League describe it, the golden goal. Uh, the first team to score in, in the uh, extra time uh, will win, basically. Let's go into the tunnel, uh, let's see what the atmosphere is like down there, and join our reporter, Stephen Boo. As, as you can imagine, Graham, the atmosphere is extremely tense here in the tunnel. Uh, the uh, Birmingham City Sports has gathered at this end, I think. Uh, this is a sort of ending that no one really knows um, how it's going to go because there's no precedent to it. No, I don't think any supporter here will have seen a sudden death no a knockout beforehand. No one really knows how either team's going to approach this. So it's, it's, it's really it's a new experience for everyone here, but it's going to be the most tense session of a football match you can imagine. I think, Stephen, actually, that... Uh, Birmingham City have actually been involved in one of these Southern Death Rounds earlier in this competition this season. Well, I think they did actually beat Gillingham or someone er later in the rounds with Southern Death. Maybe Swansea City actually. Swansea City at St Andrews were beaten by Birmingham on Southern Death. So um, well, I suppose really that swings, the pendulum swings a little bit in Birmingham's favour. Well, perhaps that gives them a slight advantage, but what's happened now, as you can hear, is, uh, is the crowd. It's got a new incentive for the crowd. The noise level's gone up once more. And, uh, well, it's, it's so hard to call it because Carlisle have matched um, Birmingham all the way so far, and Birmingham fans know that. And, uh, well, it's just going to be very tense. Stephen Booth down in the players' tunnel, and Stephen said the... Well, you would have thought it was the start of the game all over again because all the flags are out, the noise has reached an incredible level again. And uh, Mick Wadsworth just having exchanges with uh, one of the Birmingham City bench. I mean, Joe will exchanges as they all head back to the benches in the Royal Tunnel. 
extra time. Carlisle United will play from left to right. Jeff Thorpe is the substitute. Richard Prokas has been taken off. And uh, a huge round of applause for Jeff Thorpe from the Carlisle supporters as the substitution is announced. So Carlisle continue to play towards the goal. They've been attacking in the second half. And maybe that's a sign of a good thing, playing towards their own supporters. David Curry will kick off for Carlisle. Stephen Hayward in the middle as well. The roar will begin as the extra time period starts as well. The referee, hands behind his back, Mr Peter Folkes. And uh, Birmingham's Paul Tate, who's a substitute this afternoon. He came on in the last 45 minutes. He could be going for a unique double today. He's one of only two players. The other was Huddersfield's Ian Dunn to claim a golden goal in this season's competition. And, of course, that was against Swansea City, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. Claridge flexed the ball forward, picked up, though, in midfield by Tony Gallimore. Back to Tony Keig, and Keig comes to the edge of his area. Tense now as everybody looks for the ball to burst the back of the net, hopefully for Carlisle United. Now, Birmingham trying to get the ball out again from their own half of the field. Nodded forward by Gary Poole, down the right-hand side. Lost to Jeff Thorpe, though. Huge roars as... Thorpe gets hold of the ball, taps it forward to David Reeves, inside again towards Jeff Thorpe, it comes across the back of the area to Conway! Oh, shot just goes inches wide of the right hand upright. And I think all the Carlisle supporters thought that was going to be it, but it just goes inches wide. Very disappointed he didn't get that on target, it dropped nicely for him, and it was the outside of the boot, I think we'll see, it just hit his outside of the right foot and a direct shot on goal and I think we may have been carried in that cup away yeah. but what a tremendous start we are the stronger side here this we afternoon look, we look as if we really want to win this trophy this afternoon Birmingham on the attack again Ward down the right hand side the ball runs away from Claridge into touch a Carlisle throw in line with their own penalty area it would have been a minute into extra time if Conway had scored and have claimed the goal that would have given them the auto windscreen shield. And I think Derek Mountfield was requiring treatment, uh, Nick. He's called, the referee's called Peter Hampton. I think he may have just cracked the, the side of his head. The referee stopped play immediately, and uh, Derek Mountfield at the moment is, uh, is receiving treatment. But, uh, again, uh, I wonder if that's a sign of things to come for Jeff Thorpe, John. Good, good attacking run, good one too, uh, and, and Jeff was instigator in that chance. Well, tremendous stuff from Jeff Thorpe. Very positive, got the ball down, run at the defence, great one too. Played across the goal and Paul Conway very unlucky not to score there. Derek Mountford certainly got a cut on his head. There's uh, blood running down his forehead. Peter Hampton treating that with the sponge now. The singing starts again. Carlisle United trying to get behind the team. And uh, as you said, there seems to be resolve on the Carlisle side. They want to win this. They've been wanting to, you know, get to Wembley and they'd li like to lift the trophy too. There seems to be more atmosphere and fire from the Carlisle fans uh, and from the Carlisle team themselves. But uh, as I say, fate sometimes is, is a little bit unkind but uh, certainly from Carlisle's point of view uh, I, I think they deserve this but Birmingham have won a free kick it's just inside the Carlisle United half over on the right hand side and uh, the Carlisle United as they say with a, a bit of defending to do free kick to Birmingham City just inside the Carlisle United half in fact about 15 yards inside 15 yards in from touch Ward takes it swings away to the left hand edge of the penalty area the header comes back into the box it's a stabbed away or attempted to by Carlisle but eventually the foot that comes in is Daesh and takes the ball out behind it's going to be the goal kick to Carlisle United as Keig places it on his six yard line and uh, wants to get the ball as far and as deep as he possibly can inside the Birmingham City half as Carlisle supporters again sing for Carlisle to get the ball forward to get that goal over the top of Conway drops for Tate down to the left hand side to Otto he gets the ball forward down the left towards Claridge who gets a touch drops for Donoa but straight across is Hayward but the ball's come across on the left hand side to Steve Claridge he falls over as Hayward makes the tackle but it's Claridge who got the last touch and the throw on the right hand side will be to Darren Edmondson we played four minutes almost of sudden death extra time and you'll know from that, that the scores are level. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. Tate, the Birmingham substitute, trying to get the ball forward down the left, runs away from Claridge, behind again for the goal kick to Carlisle United. And Birmingham just look a little tired, they look a bit, little lacklustre. 
a yeah. little bit. Uh, I, I think they're doing it. I said that before. To, to me, they're, they're, they're walking around. Uh, they're walking around with their heads down. Um, it looks as though they're not together as a unit. Carlisle, I think, uh, really are outwitting them. Um, Carlisle are pulling together so much, and you, you can feel the gel with the supporters and the team. The supporters want to get on there and score that goal. I think. Oh, for a flash of brilliance like we've seen several times this afternoon from Carlisle, but one that actually sees the ball end up in the back of the net. Now it's Birmingham trying themselves to get forward again. Ward's pass out on the far side to Gary Poole. Takes the ball inside the defender, Thorpe. Gets the ball across the back of the box. It drops over everybody, but comes to Otto. He puts the ball back in again. Donawa brings it down, tries the shot, it's blocked. Comes back out, it's taking the deflection. And that takes it out and behind. And how many times recently have we seen deflections go in the back of the net? when Carlisle have been defending, this time it goes behind for a corner and Tate will take this for Birmingham, Birmingham supporters now get fired up a corner on the left, we've been playing six minutes of sudden death extra time Tate for Birmingham, puts the ball in, floats in towards the far post it's headed out and behind though by Daesh, out into that sandy area that sandy D behind Tony Cage's goal and uh, again well defended in the box by Carlisle United nil-nil Tony Keg then with this goal kick, left hand edge of his six yard box. As everybody heads into the midfield area, right footed, swings out to the left hand side. Thorpe goes up for the header, but it drops down in midfield for Paul Tate. Almost looked as though he used an arm, but the ball goes out to the right side to Jonathan Hunt, to Claridge. Just on the right touch line now with Jonathan Hunt again. Halfway inside the Carlisle half, steps inside Jeff Thorpe's tackle. Puts the ball across the back of the box, headed out by Dean Walling, into midfield to Mark Ward. Thorpe steps across, but it's now gone across to Gary Paul onto the touchline. Jonathan Hunt showed too much of it to Thorpe, and surely he obstructed Thorpe. The referee says, play the advantage. And now it's with David Reeves on the left-hand side. Back to Tony Gallimore, and eventually into touch. Or is it? No, stays in, in play. Thorpe tries to turn it forward and get it away. And the referee eventually sees the ball go back to Bennett, and Bennett's going to have to pump this ball into touch. Just won't go until Claridge actually side-puts it into touch, and Jonathan Hunt can now get some treatment from that original challenge on Thorpe when in fact it was actually I think Hunt was the culprit yeah and I think we're going to about another substitution I think Jamie Robinson's got his tracksuit bottom off he's uh, they're just debating about uh, who else to come off but uh, yeah the the I think there's a touch of cramp out there as well uh, with carriage but that was a, a bit of a clatter and uh, one of the Carlisle lads I think is it Tony Gallimore is uh, He's, been, he's having treatment as well, but uh, when you think 90 minutes and now extra time on a Wembley pitch, uh, soaking atmosphere, there's bound to be a little bit of cramp. Well, it's Derek Mountfield who's on, the, on his haunches. I think he's uh, either suffering cramp or he's still having the after effects, that little knock, but uh, he's getting to his feet again. He's all right, but Jonathan Hunt is laying out on his back on the far side, so maybe the injury to him is a little bit more serious as the referee stands over him. Now he gets himself up now onto his launches and takes a drink of water or whatever it is these days they get given out on the pitch and uh, be the salt tablets on it they'll take for the uh, for the cramp you get plenty of salt in them instructions being issued to Darren Edmondson by Mick Wadsworth who's come out to the end of the tunnel and Jamie Robinson now just starting to warm up on the dog track that runs around the pitch here at Wembley in the sand just takes a run down towards the right corner flag behind the advertising hoardings so suggests that the uh, substitution is probably imminent and of course remember Birmingham City have used both their substitutes so if Jonathan is, is injured he's going to have no replacement that can come on for him he's going to have to battle through but he's struggled up he's uh, walking gingerly back towards halfway and it's going to be a drop ball on halfway the referee will leave I think and I think it'll just be knocked into touch or back to the Birmingham goalkeeper by Tony Gallimore as it was Steve Claridge who originally knocked the ball into touch on the far right hand side so that Jonathan Hunt could get treatment for that injury. Eight minutes into sudden death extra time. Birmingham City nil, Carlisle United nil. You're listening to the Auto Windscreen Shield final live on BBC Radio Cumbria. And will there be a goal or will this go to penalties? Ward in the centre, in the centre circle, puts the ball out to the right hand side for Birmingham to Poole who played it back into Hunt. He tries to find the space down the right hand side by the corner flag. Donoa finds it, gets the ball back in towards Claridge. He's got to try and turn. Is that a penalty? No, the referee says no as Claridge went over, the tackle came in and he walked away from it, well sighted but the ball comes out to Ward, he tries to put the ball back in the box a little tussle between Edmondson and Ward again I think there's a little bit of a laugh this time but Birmingham still have the ball and have the pressure Otto swings the ball in towards the far post the header comes in over the top from Hunt who's still I think struggling 
and the ball out behind and there's going to be the second substitution it's going to be Jamie Robinson it's going to come on in the 99th minute and the player that's going off at the moment uh, I'm not quite sure but the number five goes up so Robinson goes on and Mountfield is the player that comes off to rousing applause from the Carlisle United supporters and we've got now just over five minutes to the end of this first period of extra time the doctor just taking Derek Mountfield off to treat the cut on his head and play resumes in the centre with Mark Ward just inside his own half taps the ball out to the right to Gary Poole plays it again down into that gap down by the right hand corner flag I think they can sense Birmingham that that's where there's space perhaps if Donovan can get the cross in which he does towards Otto heads it down to the back of the box a chance for Hunt to try and get in the shot he couldn't do Otto tries it into the side netting corner because Cade it seems may have got a touch to that and Jonathan Hunt is struggling on that ankle yes he is indeed and uh, the Birmingham City fans on the far side thought that was a goal because the ball crashed into the side netting and uh, Tony just got a fingertip to it I think it was going wide but uh, here comes yet another dangerous corner kick for Carlisle to defend Tate with the corner towards the far post it swings off the head of the defender Barnett who's coming to the box but it goes wide on the right hand upright and Carlisle can breathe easily again Keig will have this goal kick five minutes remain in this first period of extra time and I wonder they are trying to utilize that space down the right for Donawa they are indeed and Birmingham have picked their game up in the last couple of minutes they seem a little bit more determined and Carlisle can't sort of break away over the halfway line they need a good run by to either Thomas or by Jeff Thorpe they need just that one or two passes to keep control of the ball Thomas trying to get a ball away but now it comes back down for Robinson to get a touch to take it into the centre circle of Otto who brings it down well and takes it away from Conway plays it out to the left hand side to Gary Cooper now plays it down into the space down the left hand edge of the penalty area for Paul Tate keeps it away from the byline then just taps it back for Cooper to put in the cross scoops it up spoons it towards the far post headed down by Hunt and then the shot comes in from Perth Claridge off the bar out to Donawa and it's cleared on the line by Carlisle two escapes in matter of seconds and Claridge can't believe it and Norkin Donawa well we're let off the hook there I think Steve Claridge did brilliant Hit his back to go, hooked it over his head and hit the bar and we're a little bit fortunate the game's still going on. Well, is there's not going to go for Birmingham City this afternoon. Tony Keg has pulled off two outstanding saves and now Carlisle saved by the bar. Now a chase for Jeff Thorpe to get behind Daesh. Bennett comes out, Thorpe crashes into the keeper. Reeves chases it down, can he score? No! From the touchline, he tried to head the ball with his foot towards the open goal. Tried to scoop it into the empty net and just didn't get hold of it right and it's gone behind into the area behind the goal well we've had nothing if we haven't had excitement have we well, oh, that was a tremendous run with Jeff Thorpe again, he just needed it? a little bit of composure there but there again Jeff Thorpe tremendous pace he must have been five yards behind the defender when he played it over his head but he did tremendously well to get the chance for United there well that's certainly got the passions raised again in Wembley three minutes till the end of the first period of extra time and another long ball forward which Birmingham have to defend they do do so they get the ball out to the right hand side to Jonathan Hunt into Paul Tate but he's dispossessed in the middle Birmingham get the ball back again flick it out to this left hand side to Ricky Otto he's got space to run through from Gary Cooper into the penalty area Otto trying to take it through gets round Edmondson flicks in the cross the header comes in and Birmingham have scored Birmingham have got the goal two minutes before the end of the first period of extra time. Carlisle's players lie on the floor. They can't believe it. Birmingham have got the goal. Tate's header, I think it was, that was flicked in past Tony Cave. Well, that was absolutely out of nothing. Ricky Otto down the left side. Birmingham supporters have gone wild. The flags now, well being waved, the touch I think came off Tate, the substitute has claimed the auto windscreen shield for Birmingham City, sudden death, extra time. Well, cool North. look for United there, it was a good ball into the box and he just flicked it, Tony Cade could do nothing about it and it just glanced into the back post, but cool luck for United, the lads are distraught on the pitch there. 
Yeah, they are distraught. But it, it was, I mean, to be fair, it was a nicely taken goal. But uh, Carlisle United battling their hearts out. And again, the fans are responding. The fans are responding absolutely marvellously. They're trying to encourage Carlisle. And quite rightly, they're going to be down for a few minutes. But I think they've got to look at this game and they think, well, we needn't fear anybody next season. Well, what a way to end it. One goal. Nil-nil after the 90 minutes into sudden death extra time and takes header ends Carlisle's dreams of lifting the cup at Wembley Barry Fry is absolutely delighted he's chased across to celebrate with Paul Tate Carlisle's players have managed to get themselves to their feet now they're in the centre circle they look absolutely distraught they are actually applauding the Carlisle supporters and now walking down through the centre circle to applaud what has been a wonderful, wonderful support from Carlisle this afternoon. But they're tired, upset, and really, what an end to what's been a cracking final. Deserve more goals in many ways, the standard of football that's been played. And Tony Cage, I think, will be doubly upset after the outstanding afternoon that he's had. Yeah, they can all hold their heads up, uh, every one of them, even uh, every one of them, the, the coaching staff and everybody. I think everybody's done a tremendous job. The object of the day was to have a good day out. If we'd won, yeah, great. And they're going to be very disappointed, but every one of them hold their heads high and uh, they should be deser they deservedly should get the freedom of Carla. Well, the applause continues. There'll be, of course, now... The moment that Carlisle step up the steps to take their losers' medals. David Rees and Paul Conway just standing askance. Michael Knighton going across to Paul Conway. And, uh, and the man of the match announced for Birmingham is uh, Barnett, David Barnett at the back. And that's got brews, booze from the Carlisle United supporters. That, uh, now Derek Mountfield leads David Reeves towards the tunnel, towards the steps to receive their losers' medals. And Derek Mountfield shakes hands with Barry Fry as David Reeves leads Carlisle up the steps at Wembley. Coming forward, he's in tears, I think. I don't think he can believe they've gone through so much this afternoon. As David Reeves leads the players now up the steps, the famous Wembley steps, Derek Mountfield behind him, Dean Walling behind Derek, Paul Conway, Jamie Robinson. Huge applause as Carlisle are announced up the steps. Darren Edmondson, Stephen Haywood, David Curry, Jeff Thorpe, Richard Prokas, Rod Thomas, Tony Cage, and Tony Elliott. All of them have had a part to play. They've run their hearts out this afternoon they've had the most amazing support behind them it's been a wonderful wonderful final 76 and a half thousand over 76 and a half thousand as brian moore presents david reeves with his losers medal shake of the hands david reeves looks absolutely distraught Derek mountfield is upset a hug from the chairman michael knight and david reeves leads the applause for the carlisle united supporters it looks as though he's about to burst into tears dean walling is in tears paul conway Jamie Robinson, Tony Gallimore, they look absolutely heartbroken. A hug for Stephen Hayward as the players now head down towards the pitch side. And it'll be Birmingham City that will take the auto windscreen shield trophy. I'm sure Carlisle will want to give their fans another chance to see them this afternoon. David Reeves just heading out now back onto the field of play as the Birmingham City team come to take their auto windscreen shield trophy. And I'll hand you now over to Graham Liver. Well, what a cruel, cruel way to go out. Carl United, people in Cumbria can be proud of them. What a great performance by United throughout the game. They played their hearts out. Every one of the Carl United team was, was, was superb. Uh, this afternoon, they really did play well, and John, really, Carlisle United, they really, really did play their hearts out. Super well, stuff. Well, I think it's been a great, just under two hours. It's, it's such a terrible way to finish. I mean, when the goal goes in, that's the game finished, and there's no way back for the lads, and they did deserve that. 
but I think you must give a mention to the Calais United supporters this afternoon who to a man have made a tremendous noise and made a great occasion of it but I feel I feel sorry for the players just now they're sitting on the pitch and as I say there's no way back after the 90 minutes is fin or after the extra time is finished that's it once the goal goes in so Birmingham City left off the auto windscreen shield the winner for 1995 they have beaten Carlisle United what a game here at Wembley United going out in Sudden death, a, score, a, goal, a goal by Paul Tate on 103 minutes. A header which beat Tony Keg and Keg this afternoon, he really did play well. And going back to you, John, uh, Tony Keg pulled off some super saves this afternoon. Well, Tony Keg was magnificent this afternoon, as was every Kalanity player, but some of the saves, I mean, you talk about the keeper's flowers and seamen, but Tony Keg this afternoon was outstanding for the whole of the 90 minutes and the extra time. The managers and the Carlisle United's director of coaching, Nick Wadsworth, now walking up to receive their medals. They also get presented with medals. Mick Wadsworth can be proud of the Carlisle United team. They're walking round now, saluting the fans, and the fans can be proud of them. A very emotional time here at Wembley. Dean Walling, of course, an emotional day already for him, anniversary of his father's death. He would have liked to win it for him today, but... What, what a game, what a super match. And Carlisle, they might have been beaten in this game, but what a great advert for third division football. Yes, they are going to go up. By far the best team in the third division. Just one point, and they will be promoted. So they'll be in the second division next season, but Carlisle United really did play well. Tony Cage talking to someone, maybe a loved one in the crowd, and... United now go on to the uh, dog track around Wembley Stadium, saluting the Carlisle United supporters. Green flags, green wigs. It's a sea of green to our right here. We're sitting in the Royal Box stand. Derek Manfield just taking his shoes off. He, he, has, he has no boots, just taking a flag from a supporter. He's finding it hard to walk. Of course... The Wembley pitch, very sapping, a, a, a very hard pitch to play on. These players have worked so hard this afternoon. It's really been a great final. And after 90 minutes, it was nil-nil, but such a, such a tense affair. And really, John, when you think about it, on four minutes, Carlisle could have scored. Well, straight away, I mean, with a tremendous chance, Jeff thought they're brilliant going down the left. Played a 1-2 with David Reeve. The ball was played across the box. And six inches closer than Paul, Paul caught the, the game would have been so different Paul came and won the game for United Thomas also missed a chance on 15 minutes but Rod Thomas had a great game today OK, he did miss a chance but what a super match the Birmingham City team they're singing and dancing they're having the, they're having the photos taken which you will see in your newspapers tomorrow morning and their fans of course delighted a great day this for Birmingham City, they're at the top of the second division. And when, when they were presented with the auto windscreen shield there, Chairman David Sullivan, Sullivan was wearing a pair of plastic blue ears. So he must be delighted. The Birmingham City team, they're just having their pitches taken. You'll see, you'll see these in your papers tomorrow morning. And a, a great day really for the Midlands club. So long have they had to live in the shadow of Aston Villa. Villa not doing so well, they could go down to the first division. Birmingham, they're now going to be in the first division, although it isn't as sewn up as Carlisle's are, but we'll have to wait and see. Just returning to the uh, Carlisle players there, now making their way around the Greyhound track. And the atmosphere at Wembley is super. Michael Knighton, the chairman and chief executive, he's clapping at the Carlisle United fans and really when you think about it Michael Knighton today can be a very proud man he's, he's been here with Manchester United on numerous occasions when he was a director there but I'm sure today means a lot more to him he's turned this club around Carlisle United were languishing at the bottom they were at the bottom of the football league going nowhere and Knighton came in and has really pumped in so, so much so much enthusiasm into the club. Carlisle United now. There's a buzz around the city. 
And going back to you, John, as I was saying, Knighton today can be such a proud man. Well, the club hopefully now goes from strength to strength. I mean, what a great platform to start on. Hopefully promotion now looks a certainty into the second division and then keep building on it. I mean, everybody that's played today will want to come back here again. It's a tremendous atmosphere. And Kaleo and the city can be proud of both the supporters and the team. So the action on the pitch, Birmingham City, of course, as you would expect, delighted. But Carlisle might, might have lost and the players will be bitterly disappointed. They're hoping to leave Wembley. Well, they were hoping to leave around about half past five. I can't see that now with the extra time. Barry Fry now just running round. He better be careful. He's had two heart attacks in the past. Let's hope. I'm sure we won't have one today. Barry Fry running round the pitch. He's delighted. This is a nice day out for Birmingham, but of course they have to sew up the second division and get up in the first because there's so much pressure on him. David Sullivan has actually said, if you don't get us up, mate, you're out of a job at the end of the season. So I think this goes a little way to him having his contract renewed. And oh, look at Barry Fry, he's, he's, he's had a great day and obviously he'll be delighted, John. Oh, it's a great day for Birmingham City now and congratulations to them, they've they done their part in the game and Barry Fry, he's such a character, he's running about all over the place. I think he was wanting to go on the pitch at the end of the game and play. The Carlisle United players, they're going down the tunnel, Nick Barnes, our sports producer, he's down there, hopefully we'll be able to talk to a few of the team. Derek Manfield just heading off now down the tunnel, all the players dejected, but they can be proud of themselves. It has been a super day, and a nice thing to see Birmingham City fans shaking hands with the Carlisle United players. It's been that sort of game, it's, it, it, it's been a really good game, and now I believe we can go down to the tunnel with our sports producer, Nick Barnes. Yes, I've got with me now Mick Woods, the director of coaching. Mick, disappointing way to finish, but a wonderful match, though. Well, it, it was, it was uh, winner-take-all in extra time, and, you know, we had a great chance to finish it in the first minute, and really, you know, you don't get too many chances like that, and, uh, you know, perhaps Conway was a little tired by that time, because he had a remarkably good game to say he's just had an operation a fortnight ago. And it was it was a good chance, and then they got a chance and they took it. So no complaints. It was a terrific game. No complaints at all. The main thing it was a terrific game, and we've had a great day out. And uh, as I've said a thousand times, let's go and win the championship because that's what does that does really matter. There's been some outstanding football this afternoon. Uh, I don't want to you know necessarily say any single player, but Tony Cage, an absolutely fantastic game in goal. Well, it's amazing. I keep asking the, the Football Association to come and watch him for the under-21s, and, and to my knowledge, it's never been watched as yet, and it's it's beyond my comprehension. I think I'm quite good at assessing young players, and I'm disappointed that uh, he hasn't had a chance of international honours yet because he's an outstanding goalkeeper. As the game wore on. One got the feeling that it was Carlisle actually seemed to have more heart and running to want to, and, and desire to want to win. Well, uh, as I say, we, we had two or three half chances in the second half. I thought they probably shaded the, uh, the second half. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was just a terrific game. We've enjoyed it and it's been a marvellous occasion and it makes you want more. I want to come again. Thanks very much. I'm very sorry it ended that way. Michael Knighton now has, has just come down the tunnel. Michael, disappointment, yeah. but really outstanding display. Outstanding. Uh, all credit to the fans, all credit to both sides. Could have gone either way. The behaviour was exemplary. The Premier League must sit up and look what the Enzo League can do. Fabulous day for everybody. Delighted. 76,500 in the ground. It, it's, the atmosphere's been electric all afternoon. The yeah. football's been good. Just Fantastic. talking to Mick Wards with Tony Kay, what an outstanding outstanding. Display. outstanding. I have to say that uh, despite 1974, for me, the greatest day in the club's history, this is a sign of things to come. Listen to it, it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, all I can say that I'm thrilled for everybody. Wonderful. You've enjoyed your day out despite the result. Despite the result, of course, the result matters in one's perspective, but frankly, who gives us out? You must be very, very proud. F fabulous. Very proud, indeed. Thanks very much, Michael Knighton, the Chairman and Chief Executive of uh, Carlisle United. There's the uh, flurry of interviews to be done now down here in the tunnel. All the TV crews are down here to, to speak to uh, Mick Wadsworth and uh, Michael Knighton. Derek's alongside of me as well. Derek, really, yes, it's disappointment now at seeing Carlisle lose, but really the whole day 
It's been a wonderful, wonderful event. Everyone's looked forward so long to this, and they haven't been let down in anything, really, bar the result. Kalar can hold their heads up. They've been proud. And when you think uh, we're going into the second division next year and Birmingham are the best team in the second division, we think they are anyway, we need fear nobody. I know disappointment's going to set in at the moment, looking on the players' faces. They are absolutely gutted, and they are disappointed. But at the end of the day, they've got to look, and they've done the, they've done the, they've done the club proud, and they've done the town proud, and they've done Cumbria proud, and you should be proud of every one of them. Now, I know as they trooped past us down the tunnel a few moments ago, all the players had their heads down. Yeah. A few looked as though, like Dean Walling, looked mm. as though he, he really just was fit to drop, was in tears, and, and he will no doubt be sorely, sadly disappointed now. But I think, give it a few days to sink yeah. in what they what they've played in, what the attendance was, what the atmosphere was like, it'll be a, a memory to cherish. I think 76,500 speaks for itself. I mean, OK, people say at the start of the season, uh, this is a Mickey Mouse competition, but it isn't. <laughs> it isn't, not for any team. If any third or fourth division team is looking at this day, then what they've got to do is say, right, I am going to be more determined to get there and have some of this, because this is a tremendous competition and all credit to the sponsors. But poor old Dean at the end, I mean, he did dedicate this, this day to his dad, who died a year ago today, uh, and you feel gutted for him. Uh, to, uh, performances out there, Tony Keg, outstanding. Darren Edmonton against a top-class winger in Ricky Otto, outstanding. Rod Thomas, lovely flashes of skill. Dean Wallin, Derek Mountfield, every man jack of them. Carlisle United... <laughs> We've just been <laughs> hooked up by someone else and almost dragged away out of the tunnel. Someone's got their foot around the cage. So Carlisle United ought to be proud of them as our as our microphone is whisked away from us. <laughs> I thought I'd been kidnapped for a second there. I think we've, we've, we've got the situation back on course again. You can hear still, though, the, the noise. Obviously, the Birmingham City supporters are going to be celebrated for a good while afterwards. But the Carlisle supporters will go away, I think, having really every cause now to still enjoy the evening and, and not feel too disheart disheartened and disillusioned on the journey back. Yeah, I, I thought the Carlisle supporters were tremendous at the end of the game. OK, the goal went in, you've got an immediate reaction of, oh no, we've lost it, and then all of a sudden they picked themselves up and they were chanting, United, United, United. And 20-odd uh, thousand of them, absolutely tremendous. And what I'd like to think, Nick, is that that last home game against Lincoln City, I'd like to think of a full house there to give the players and everybody connected with the club the support they deserve. I suppose if 26,500 can travel down to here, there's no reason why this 14 or 15,000 can't be at Brunton Park. It'd be nice to be at 26,500 turning up at Brunton Park, wouldn't it? <laughs> BBC Radio Cumbria. Sport.